This is my new family from Ipo, Malaysia. Yeah! Yeah! Malaysia. Malaysian superstar. <laughs> Welcome to Seoul, South Korea. This cosmopolitan world capital is the country's cultural, political, and economic center. The capital city area is also so expansive, it's home to nearly half of the nation's entire population. In this episode, I'm taking you into Seoul to explore some of the most incredible things this city has to offer, from captivating K-pop culture, to age-old palaces, to bustling street bazaars. The contrast of new and old in Seoul shows how the capital embraces advancements and modernization without forsaking its foundational heritage. This intriguing blend highlights the rich and multifaceted nature of the city, and we're about to explore it now. So come with me as we explore Seoul, from fascinating local museums, to traditional cooking classes, to the demilitarized zone near the border with North Korea. It's gonna be a wild ride, so buckle up and let's go to Seoul, South Korea. What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been Here in Seoul, South Korea. What? I'm finally here. I'm here with my boy Sam from Sam and Audrey. Dude, so good to see you again. I didn't think we'd be meeting up this year. Yeah, a man. Crazy awesome surprise. Tonight's our first night here in Seoul and we're gonna go eat some Korean barbecue. If you guys don't know about Korean barbecue, it's the biggest thing in Korea. It's one of the main things in their cuisine and Sam knows all about it. So what we're having, we're gonna start with something called Sam Gyapsal. There's different types of barbecue you can get in Korea. We're gonna start with the very most common one. It's called Sam Gyapsal. It's pork belly strips, pork belly fat. Oh my gosh, dude, you're gonna love it. This area is called Jongro. It's a very popular area for nightlife, entertainment, restaurants. So, yeah, man, we're, uh, we came to the right spot. So we're going to this place right here. There's like a pig in the front. So obviously they have some good pork belly, right? And you know what's funny is the, they always have cartoon animals inviting you in to eat them in Korea. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that's good, that's good. I like that. And here's a lot of lights. You can see lots of little restaurants all over the place. Yeah. There's a few different other barbecue joints here. This one looks the best. So Let's go inside. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are. We're having a Korean barbecue. As you can see, you know, this is how it works. I mean, they have like a little grill in the middle. They give yeah. you all these sides and they put the pork belly in the middle. So the way it works here is you have to order two pieces. You yeah. can't order one. No. You have to order two. You have to order two. Automatic. Automatic. Okay. Cool. And uh, yeah, so he's gonna do that and he's gonna keep grilling it. We don't touch it. We don't oh, touch we it. We can also come over here and just have some sides if we want. Yeah. This one looks amazing. What is this called? That is like mixed vegetables with um, red pepper paste. All right, so once he brings out the meat, what happens is he cooks it, you know, one side, he makes it a little brown, flips it over, makes it more brown, and then once he, that's done, then he cuts it up into these little strips, and then he really cooks it, and now he's putting some of the vegetables onto the grill as well. That's and cabbage, bro. That's cabbage? Yeah, oh my yeah. God. Cabbage, and then we have all this mix. I mean, this is amazing, and it's only, $12 per slab of pork belly. So uh, this is a total of 24 and that comes with all these vegetables. Yeah. And we also got some beer. I don't know what beer that is. Okay, dude. So I'm going to show you how to eat Sam Gyapsal, the Korean way, the Korean pork belly way. Not the Korean pork belly way, the Korean way to eat Korean pork belly. So what you do is you grab your strip like this in your chopstick. You have a piece of lettuce in your hand and then you take it for a swim. It's called the Sam Jang sauce red pepper paste and soybeans. You place it into the lettuce and you can also put some garlic in here too. You grab a, a piece of garlic, you wrap it up into a ball and it is a one biter. It's not a two biter. If you want to do it the Korean style, it is a one biter. So check out this. Oh man. So good. Korean barbecue heaven right here. Let's crack open that beer. We've got some pass. And this is one of the four major brands that are in Korea. I believe it's Obi Height Cast, and I can't remember the other. Oh, Capri. Gobei. Wow, it looks good. All right, I'm gonna try Korean barbecue for the first time. So like you said, dip it in here, right? Yep. So I grab one of these leaves. So that right there, ooh, hot. This is garlic cloves, and this is garlic like mash. Yeah. Okay. You know, make a, a big little taco. <laughs> oh, wow. Mmm. So fresh, so moist. Mmm, so juicy. The spice too is really good. Not too spicy. Mmm. What is this? That I believe is a pickled, mm. pickled something. Oh wow! I'm not sure, entirely sure what that is. 
Looks like a pickle. <laughs> looks like a pickle. The Korean pickle. Do it. <laughs> We're calling it that. This is amazing. So pick it up. Awesome. Perfect. Garlic clove. Right in there. Nice. Good. 10,000 likes. <laughs> Love the garlic in there though. Give it a whole like. Mmm, it's very pungent. Okay. Yeah. But the spice here, I'm gonna do this alone, like just dip it. Right. Yeah, you could totally do it on its own. No, but this is too hot. I gotta like the side. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm having Korean salad. It's got all kinds of different things. One of the most predominant features is um, bean sprouts. And it's a red pepper paste, which means it's spicy and a little bit sweet. Really good stuff. I'm gonna try the Korean salad. Oh, it looks so incredible. It basically is like a mix of like seaweed, maybe some like cabbage, but like in like strains, right? Like little strips. Oh, and the red sauce. Wow. Isn't that good? It's the best salad ever. Dude, and this the, came with a meal. The portion is gigantic. Well, the portion is just like, look at this. Dude. <laughs> That's not even all of it. There's more. There's about twice as much underneath. Mm. These things here, all the side dishes are called banchan, which technically in Korean means side dishes. And whenever you deplete something, like we went through all of the leaves, they come back and you get free refills. They don't. You don't even have to ask. They check your plate, and if they know something's empty, they fill it up again for you. So you can you could have three of these salads. You can have four of these technically. Not that you'd want to, but it's a lot. I can eat that salad and that alone and be perfect, perfect content. You know what? You know what? That's the perfect caveman diet, man. <laughs> yeah. it's like no carbs, right? It's moderately priced, but what's really nice here is that you get the free refills. What's the, the price that's listed on the menu is what you pay. There's no tax added afterwards. And you're not expected to tip in Korean culture. It's, uh, in fact, it'd be really weird if we left money on the table. So this is just regular seaweed? Oh my god. Super tasty. It's a little spicy. I haven't tried it yet. And then here we have like some thick pickles. I mean, it's like straight pickles. You know over there? Okay, mm. and you can, we can also put the cabbage and also garlic on the grill. Now the thing with this is that it burns quickly, so you have to monitor it and flip it really quickly. So I'm grabbing the garlic as well. If you put it in the center of the grill, obviously it cooks faster. If you want it to cook slower, you can add it on the side. All right, last piece. Me and Sam have been going to town on this. Just gotta dip it here, get the heat. I'm actually gonna throw, why not? Throw this into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of that right there. Oh, make it good and get some more of this. Oh well, it's gonna be a hard one to put down, but I can do it. Whoa, look how good this is. Oh wow, the cabbage with the garlic. It actually, this garlic tastes almost like a wasabi. Wow. Mm. Oh wow. Whoa. It's hot. Hold it. Wow. If this is the beginning of Korean food, I'm gonna rank it up there with like Indian. Japanese. Oh yeah. Like it's like wow. It's it's, a, it's an amazing cuisine, dude. There's so much. There's like nothing. Oh no. There's like one of like thousand dishes. How much is it? It's thirty six thousand won with the beer, so about thirty four dollars, seventeen per person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye. That was one of the best meals of all time. I know. That's incredible. The experience. The experience is fantastic. And you can the coolest thing is you can linger there for hours. Like we were there for like two yeah. at least two hours. We spent an extra like half hour just relaxing yes. for beer. Just chatting. It's been great, man. Catching up. And now we're gonna walk through this neighborhood. It's so yeah. full of lights, but it's dying out because it's 10 p.m. Lots of neon going on. Where are we? Where are we? Yeah. It's a Sunday night. Everyone's getting ready for school and it's, work. <laughs> it's Sunday, you know. I didn't even know what day it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you travel, that's what happens a lot. Yeah. Is that you forget the days, especially when you're like literally working or you know moving all day long. Yeah. You forget the days. I never remember the days. This area is really amazing, as you can see. It feels like Tokyo. You know, all lit up. 
Lots of flashing lights. The neon, the neon's out of control. The neons. I mean, it feels like daylight right now here. It's crazy. Makes you want to keep going. <laughs> it must be a good strategic business move. So I think we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go for a beer right now. We just found a place right here. It's a craft beer spot. Yeah. And I'm hoping they have Korean craft beer. I've never tried that before. I want a strong beer. Give me a 10 percenter. That's all I need. And then it's bedtime. It's a sleeping pill. And it's called what is it called? Munchin Duck. Mitchin, Mitchin Mitchin duck. Duck. So Mitchin, that means crazy chicken. Crazy chicken? That's crazy chicken, yeah, literally. Let's get some, no, I don't want crazy chicken, I want some beer. Yeah, how did you say it? Very good selection of beers here. We decided to go with Korean. I'm getting a German style, and you're getting a pale ale. So, so he's getting a health advice, and, health advice, and I'm getting a pale ale. Yeah. And, and they're they're very light. I think they're five percent alcohol, so not crazy. As you can see, really cool ambiance here. This place is like chicken and beer. That's a big thing here in Korea: chicken and beer. Chicken and beer. We're actually doing a place tomorrow night. Yeah, chicken and beer. Fried chicken places in the U.S. if you can believe it, and Canada too. Yeah, yeah for capital. Wait, till, like when. You I'll point him out to you when we're walking down the streets, man. You, you can't believe how many fried chicken places there are in Korea. It's crazy. And then right here, as you can see, is like their little top, right? So they have the beer, they have the keg, they have this nice little setting here. Lots of girls, so if you're looking for girls in this area, come here. Gumbay! <laughs> Korean beer is good. It's good. This is mine's really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. How about yours? Mm, man, that's a good beer. I like it though. It's very light. Same time you have the hops. Mm. A little fruity. Maybe a little bitter too, but not so bad. Damn good beer. You feel like this too? Like really I like it. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the Hefenweizen, South Korean Hefenweizen. Mm. Oh wow, it's fruity, and you can smell the fruit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you're right, passion fruit. Passion fruit or dragon fruit? Yeah. Good to be a very light. Yo, Sam. Whoa, we're by Temple. Look at that. Oh wow. That's crazy. And yeah, what an amazing night. Barbecue was out of control. It was. One of the best barbecues of all time, Try for not real. To get run over. <laughs> I mean, putting the pork belly into the leaf and eating it like that, man, wow, it just like blew me away. Yeah, and you love that salad, dude. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to eat again. Yeah. Like, we have to eat more Korean barbecue. Oh, dude, there's like, there's three or four different styles we can try while, you, while you're here. And like 15 oh. different styles of craft beer, so I'll get ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my boy Sam's channel, Sam and Audrey, Thanks. my channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in South Korea. Peace. Peace. What's up guys, this is David Hoffman from David's Spin here in Seoul, South Korea. I'm so excited, it's my first day, and today I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm gonna go do a cooking class, a Korean cooking class. You know, I eat a lot, but I don't cook. <laughs> but it's all good. We're gonna start a day here at the K-Style Hub. I don't know what's inside. We're gonna go in here for an hour, and then from there we're gonna go to the cooking class. I'm super excited. Can't wait to learn how to make some of my favorite Korean dishes. It's gonna be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go inside. This is a K-Style Hub building. It's basically the home of the Korean tourism office. There's multiple levels. Here in the second level, we have like K-Style uh, culture and we have the travel information, right? And the next level is cuisine. So it teaches you everything about the ingredients and different dishes. We're gonna go right now to this area and show you what this is all about, what K-Style, like pop culture is about. Let's go. First thing we have here is an interactive map and basically we can go and see different locations all around Korea. So we have right here Jeju Island. It's a beautiful island off the coast of the southern part of South Korea. And we're actually not going there on this trip, but it looks amazing. It's really beautiful, like volcanic island. And then as we keep walking through, you're gonna see, you know, regional tourism promotional zones. So these are all the different like states in Korea, right? Different states. And then over here, we're gonna make it to the K-Star zone. And basically, you know, if you guys don't know about K-pop, uh, K it's basically like, you know, the music industry and the culture out here. But this, this is really funny. Oh my God, it's hilarious, dude. <laughs> and here we have like a VR experience. So we're gonna go skiing in Korea. Oh, whoa. <laughs> 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 it's not skiing, dude. I'm on top of a building. 
Oh, is it scary? A, a little bit, bro. I'm about to fall off a building. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Hanging out with the homies. K Star. K Star. K Star. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. So basically, here we have some cutouts, right? But then we also have over here like star photos, so you can get photos. Everybody's taking up the spot. So you can get a photo here. Come, come, follow me. Open Gangnam Style. <laughs> whoa, whoa, there he is. So, we definitely have to go to Gangnam, by the way. <laughs> we are going to the third level, which is all about Korean food. My favorite section. It's really cool because here, they're going to show you all the ingredients that goes into Korean food, as well as different plates. Wow, and that's a lot of different dishes. Look Man, at that. What is that? You know what that is? That is called Han Chunshik. It's like a royal court meal. So you have like something centered on, on, the, on a principal dish, such as a soup or meat, and then the rest is all banchan side dishes. Part of this Korean cuisine culture is, you know, basically putting like kimchi and different cabbages into barrels and letting them ferment, right? Yeah, exactly. They also do that with spices, with the, like the red pepper paste and stuff, and the soybean paste. And so, yeah, these are the traditional clay pots used to, for the fermentation process. What they did here is they added like a light show and that's like different seasons. So basically each one goes through, you know, when it's really hot, when it's really cold, yep. different things are happening inside like yeah. the barrel, right? And Korea gets four very distinct seasons here. Yeah, And, and the winters here are freezing. They're really cold. That's one thing that a lot of people don't realize before they come to Korea. In the winter, it snows, it is cold. And then as we pass this section, now we get into like all the spices and yeah. sauces. Wow, man. So many, and lots of salt here too. Lots of salt. Coarse salt, rose salt, got pumpkin seeds. You have all these different delicious sauces. Oh my God, I can't wait to try this stuff. Sam, where's the food at? <laughs> in this hallway, we have a section that basically shows you all the different dishes here in Korea. You know, as you can see, it's really lit up and yeah. we have amazing dishes. What are these? So this is like nuffi, I don't know what that is. Yeah, that is a kind of dok, it's a rice cake. So this is a rice cake, nuti tuko, and then yeah. we have like bibimbap, we have kimchi, we have pork, what is this? Oh, this is another rice cake, so a lot of rice cakes. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, that's basically what this, this section is. It's basically showing you all the different dishes because, you know, Korean, uh, you know, food culture yeah. is so diverse. It's like China and Japan. There's so many different things and people just think barbecue yeah. and kimchi. It's not that. It's Way so more. much more. Yeah. One of my favorite dishes, well, you were talking about rice cake. Something that's really interesting is that there's so many festivals in Korea and they eat a different style of rice cake for each festival. That's really fascinating. It's time to go. Let's go to our Korean cooking class. Follow us. It's gonna be the first time for me. And then it's a Anyo Yeah, Anyo So it's hello. Me, hold on, hold on, hold on. So cooking class, huh? Yeah, cooking class. How, how many different kimchi you said? 200? No, more than 200. 200? Kimchi, yeah. That's amazing. And we're going to try 200, right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> I want to try 200. Yeah, sure. So we're learning how to make two different things. We're going to learn how to make Korean pancakes, which are called hamul pajeon, the seafood and green onions. And then also we're going to learn how to make sungubu jjigae, which is a spicy Korean stew with tofu. Nice meeting you everyone. My name is Gia. I'll be your instructor today. Uh, is everybody ready? Ready. Yeah. Ready. Everybody ready. ready. No, no one's ready. You don't put it. Yeah, you guys. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa, whoa. Can I do it? Alright. Oh, this is great. Yeah. I like it. It's gonna show my belly. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's been eating too much. Yeah. <laughs> Or is this wrong? No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, perfect. So first step before doing any cooking class, you gotta wash your hands, right? Gotta keep it clean. Always. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Single, I can cook. Well, I look like I can cook. I'm a catch, I'm a catch. <laughs> Every day actually at home. Japan, China, same. This sun-dried pepper from, you know, fresh, um, organic pepper, radish, garlic, leek, shiitake, dried shiitake. Mm -hmm. This is kelp, or Japanese oh. call this kombu. In English, kombu. Cut in a small bite size. I'm going to just crush from the top. You can see. 
serve roughly means you don't have to cut all the way down leave a little bit on the bottom like this you know <laughs> too unique because you're gonna eat this as a lunch you're gonna eat so if you see the instruction we prepared all the stock already so I'm going to add the garlic and the leek to flavor the oil okay so the first dish we're making is sunju deja. Sundubu chige. Oh my god, <laughs> that was difficult. It's okay. Sundubu means the food. Okay, perfect. And this is Chef Jia. She's the one teaching us today. And so I'm gonna start, right? So I'm gonna cut up a few vegetables. We're gonna put it into the sizzle right there. Yep. Then we're gonna add some some broth, mm -hmm. and then add the seafood. Yeah, right? perfect. 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 I'm listening. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can okay. See. So how we start first? Okay. The first thing you wanna do is cut this in a bite size. Okay. So cut this in half. Uh huh. Okay. So one. Yeah. Two. Perfect. And then I would cut once more here. Okay. Yeah. That one. Uh huh. Two yeah. and three. Perfect. Nice. Okay. okay. Everything's all prepared. Perfect. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. And then you want to slice them and then it's going to get missed. So I need to do it because I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. I'm lefty. Is that good like that? Nice. Yeah. So I'm really not cooking. She's just cooking for me. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just assistant. The best assistant. Come on. Yeah. Divine the, the shrimp. Do you think right. you can do it? Oh, it's easy. Yeah. Head? Do you keep head? Yeah. Because keep you want to, yeah. All right. Okay. So like that. So, uh, Koreans, we like to keep the shape so that you know that beautifully it's going to turn pink at the end. Yeah. So if you take the head and tail, it's easy to eat, but you don't know if it is a shrimp or if it is a, you know, squid. Do you vein it? Yeah, get rid of that vein. Oh, that's basically the intestines, right? Yes, Everything's coming yes, out of there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you see the... I see it. And yeah, then right you want to, using the toothpick... To the toothpick, get rid of it. Yeah, carefully, not oh, to wow. break it. Precision work. Yes. You gotta pull it all out. Good job. Right. Good job you wanna David. quickly rinse this mine as well? Yeah. Okay, I think that's Nice. Very nice. Where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> she left me. You got personalized assistance. Okay, for so a what while. are we doing next? <laughs> now I gotta read. Yeah, <laughs> now you gotta read. First thing we gotta do is turn it on, right? Yeah. And then we're gonna put in the stock. Yeah. So we're waiting for the stock that's over here. Uh, before the stock, you put some oil and. Uh, some oil? Yeah, so with the onions and garlic and a little bit of. Maybe two or five minutes later because it's not really hits. It's not hot. Okay, right. It needs to right. sizzle first, right? right? Sizzle first, yeah. Yeah, yeah. First the garlic and the. Right, perfect. Oh, so use a spoon here, okay? So we have that like get a little crispy, right? Cook a little bit. Mm. Okay. He hasn't burnt any. Soy sauce? Fish sauce? Right. You're not allergic to anything. No, no, no. I, I eat it all. So, so you're gonna be spicy, okay? Let's spice it up. Okay, everything together. Okay, she's going fast with it. All at once. Get it in there. <laughs> everything, everything. So next up, we're gonna add the broth. Ready? Yes. Go ahead. So as you can see, seasoning everything. Mm -hmm. So this gets, uh, gives a delicious flavor in everything. This is a vegetable broth. Perfect. This condition, we're gonna bring to a boil until the vegetable cooks. Okay, so we're gonna just cook this until the vegetable is ready. Wow, look at that, look at all the red flakes. It's gonna be very spicy, yummy. Oh, I'm about to try some of this one. Not yet. Mm, the broth is good though, I like it. <laughs> it's spicy, dude. It's spicy? Yeah. yeah. It's good. I'm going to scoop in tofu to my sundubu. It's very soft, be careful. Carefully scoop in once or twice. And I'm going to bring to a boil. It's gonna take another five minutes because it's already hot. So next up, we got tofu and we have our shrimp and clams, right? So what we have to do is we have to drain the tofu. Just come over here. Just literally go like that. Just drain it a little bit right, right there. As you can, if you want, use your finger. Right there. Okay. The way you do this, you don't just throw it in. You gotta cut it into like three pieces, right? So one like that on top. It has to go into the broth so it absorbs all that flavor, right? And there. And the last piece, and as you can see, it looks like mozzarella, but it's not. And it tastes almost like nothing. And then that's why you put it into like different sauces or broth. It makes it absorb that. And next up, we grab the clams and the shrimp. 
Yeah, I'll put the shrimp first, right? Put the shrimp on top, right? Like that. Another really shrimp on top, right? Put it in. And then you grab the clams and you gotta throw them into the broth. So let them go in deep. Ooh, it's really hot. Just gotta put them in there. They have to absorb. You don't mix anything, right? Because if you start mixing, you're gonna break up that tofu. And you don't wanna break up the tofu. Because if not, it's gonna look like garbage, she was saying. <laughs> but he's got to push the clams down her. Ooh, it's too hot. It's too hot. Not bad for your first cooking class. Not bad. And now we have to wait like five more minutes and then it's ready to eat. Okay, next is Korean pancake. This is not a sweet pancake like crepe or like a dessert pancake. This is more like a main dish. This is all-purpose flour, one pinch of salt, a little bit of black pepper. Mix. I'm adding a little bit of ice cold water. That's the right consistency. What do you think? It's too... What do you think? It's too thick, right? So let me know. The yogurt, not the Greek yogurt, the regular yogurt. That, uh -huh. This is not a food for every day. To make it flat. To mix it. Sometimes the eggs goes in the batter. Uh, traditionally, Korean food, we don't have many deep fried dishes. The food is bubbly, so the batter it's dancing to do from now. Just add the thing, add all the batter at once. Put this on the top. Any vegetable that you like, the squid, shrimp. Um, so like you're decorating your garden. Just decorate your pancake on the top like this. Decorate the garden. Yeah, I'm going to use this as a glue to stick everything on the top. If it goes out, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Be like you're cooking steak, don't flip too often. Wait until the bottom part is brown and crispy. You have to lift like this, just flip at once like this. Chef Gia just taught us how to make hamul paja, which is a savory pancake. So I'm checking right now. I'm not quite ready to flip it. I'm gonna give it another minute. <laughs> All right, dude, so I am trying the hamul pajan. So over here, I'm grabbing a piece of it, taking it for a swim in the sauce, which has soy sauce. Big bite. Mm. Love how it's crispy on the bottom. And guys, this is a type of food that is typically had in Korea after a long day of hiking or when it's raining outside. Pair it with some makgeolli, maybe some soju. Delicious stuff. Okay, so we're starting off with some hamul bajan. Wow, savory pancake with some squid. Oh my god, this thing looks amazing. It's got vegetable pancake with seafood. So first thing I gotta do is just grab a good chunk. Whoa, look at that big chunk. And then you dip it into this amazing soy with vinegar, a little bit of red chilies right there. Wow. So a little more. Oh wow. Crunchy spring onion. Mm, I love the seafood aspect and the eggs throughout. Oh wow, this is like mind blowing. It's so good, huh? Dude, this is like the best pancake of all time. Mmm. <laughs> it's so good. Not sweet at all. Very savory. Mmm. It's the vegetables here in Korea are outstanding. Outstanding. And here we have it, sundubu jjigae. Yeah. So tofu, we got clams, we got shrimp. Wow, this looks so good. Uh, it's still a little hot, and then right next to it we have some rice. So traditionally, you go in straight from here, eat, then you get some rice, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna go and get a piece of tofu. Oh man, I love tofu. It doesn't taste like anything if you eat it alone, but with this, it's absorbed all the flavors. Mm. Dude, it just melts in your mouth. Wow. <laughs> then after that, get a little bit of rice. Mm. Super sticky. Mm. What I would do, I'll dip this. So dip it in. That absorbs some of that stuff. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, wow. I love it. The broth has turned into a clammy broth. Mm. So now I'm going to grab a clam. Look at this clam. Look how beautiful this is. So the best thing to do with the clam is just go in. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. The onions. Mmm. A little spicy, not too bad. Got a lot of vegetables in here. Mmm. Next. <laughs> Cucumber. Mmm. Clams. Oh, wow. Dude, I love the broth. Mmm. 
It's a little spicy, not too bad. Some cucumbers and tofu. Mm. Big combination. I like it. The pancake won it. They yeah. won it. Mm. <laughs> pancake's a champion. You won me over today, man. It's so good. Your turn. So excited to try the sundu bujige. I love the, how the tofu is served in this particular Korean stew. It's like a silken tofu. It's so soft. Oh, man. That's my first bite, tofu. Mm. It just absorbs all the spices, all the flavors. And there's a lot going on in here. This is one of my favorite Korean stews, Korean jjigae. So you gotta try it when you come to Korea. Wow, what an epic day it's been. So we started off at the K-Style Hub. We saw, you know, basically K-Style pop or pop culture. And then we went up and saw all the different ingredients they have here in Korea for food. And then we came here and had an epic cooking class. I mean, the food was so amazing. It's hard for me to remember the name. So what do we have? So we had sundubu jjigae and we also had hamu pajeon, the Korean pancake. Both delicious. And we both made them, which is surprising. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, for sure, the pancake is the winner. I mean, it just blew my mind. Yeah. Savory pancake, a little crispy, a little crunchy, you know, a little sweet, a little spicy. I mean, it had all the combination right there. And then obviously the tofu. I'm a tofu guy, so the tofu with the clams. Oh man, just so good. Korean food is like blowing my mind. I've only been here two days. I had barbecue yesterday. I had this today, and I cannot wait to eat more Korean food. Well guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Subscribe to us, Samuel and Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in South Korea. Peace. Good afternoon, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in Seoul, South Korea. Today we're doing a mix. We're gonna go to the National Museum of Korea, which is right behind me. And then after this, we're gonna go eat a staple here in Korea. It's KFC, which is Korea fried chicken paired with beer. And what's the name of that? It's called Jimak. So, chicken, G, mak is makju, which is Korean and beer, G mak. Wow. Can't wait. What we're gonna do here at the museum is we're gonna do like an interactive experience. It's not just a museum where we just walk around. We're gonna do some cool stuff. You guys ready? Let's go inside. Our first stop here in the museum is the third level, which is Asian art, sculptures, and crafts. And yeah, we're gonna learn all the history of South Korea. And my friend Angela right here, she knows all the history, right? You know it all? Yeah, uh, yeah. Two, two thousand years, two thousand years? Yeah. <laughs> this museum is huge. Huge, look at this. Ginormous in the center, we have this like, like an open space area. Incredible, it's huge. And we haven't even seen really much yet, but can't wait to check it out. In this room, we have celadon, which is a type of ceramic. This, these actually date back over a thousand years, between 10 and 13th century mind-blowing and as you can see the color is what makes it very distinct right so it's like a green and blue color and this is only found in south korea and what they were telling us is that the people who still make it nowadays to make it this perfect is almost impossible so 90 percent of what they make they throw away beautiful look at this this is incredible here we have a dragon there we have like some dogs and over here as you can see they have like plates and yeah so you know now when they make it usually it's like something wrong a little crack or something but these are perfect to be a thousand years old and perfect that's why they're here in the national museum okay this is the pensive bodhisattva and it goes back to the three kingdoms period in korea and it's considered the quintessential um, beautiful form of a bodhisattva in buddhism and as such it's considered a national heritage there are two that cycle in and out to protect the works and these would be contemporaries of your greek sculptures um, and the developments that were happening in the Western world. And um, here it's an element of worship. It's intended to bring about peace in the person that's observing it and in doing so, allow them to seek and get closer to enlightenment. And this wall shows us what each country, when they, you know, when they carve Buddhas out, what it looks like. Each one's very different. India, China, Korea, and Japan. Japan is like thinner ones, China a little thicker. Some of them are like fat and laughing Buddha. And then Korea just, uh, I mean, very different. The eyes are just way more cut, you know, slit. And then the India one just looks more like people from India. So, you know, very different, very distinct. And here we have a massive scroll of the Buddha and like Buddhist related gods. As you can see, lots of them. You have the huge Buddha in the middle. And then on the right and the left, you have like easy like 50 different like gods. Wow, it is massive. It's easy like 50 feet. Wow. 
Super impressive. I love the colors. So next up we're visiting exhibits from the Chosun period, which was the last period before Japanese occupation. There was a move away from Buddhism to Confucianism, which meant um, completely different architecture. There was more of an emphasis on simplification and elegance. So it's, it's pretty impressive some of the things you can see here. This is a 10 story pagoda dating back to 1348. It is a monster. Look at this. On its base, lions, arhats, scenes of Chinese novel, the journey of the West are carved in three tiers. This thing is amazing. This museum is just stunning, man. It's so big. So we're in a room that has arhats in it, which um, a bodhisattva is trying to share their knowledge with you. And an arhat has reached enlightenment and really doesn't feel the need to share that with you. You should find it on your own. I mean, this is the coolest room in the whole place. This is amazing. And you got to wear your backpack forward because some people like turn and like actually hit it. Look at this. This is incredible. Wow. Like little, little heads or like little Buddhas, but... What are these? Arhats in Tanzil. And unfortunately this exhibit doesn't actually stay here. It moves around different museums around Korea. But yeah, just incredible. What do you think, Sam? Very impressive. Very impressive. We can't see the whole museum. It's just too big. It's way too big. Too many things. I mean, I, I loved everything in there, but the viewpoint when you walk outside is oh. epic. What do we see here, Sam? So we have Namsan Tower, which is also known as Seoul Tower. And then off in the distance, there's an even bigger mountain. And yeah, this is very impressive. A nice green space. And w where's North Korea? Which way is it? North Korea. I think it actually is that way. <laughs> yeah. I think North Korea is north. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to enter another section of the museum. And it's going to be way more interactive. Get ready. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to carve a seal. If you guys don't know about seals, they date back over 4,000 years. And that represented different classes, right? And what they were telling us is that usually they have something called the new on top. And if it has a turtle, it was for kings. And if it had a dragon, it was the emperor, right? And then, you know, many different social classes. So, like, super poor people, they wouldn't even have this. They would just, like, you know, draw their hand, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to get a stone. So flat part is what we put here. So we're going to open this. And so we're going to loosen this up. Take this out. Take these two out. Flat on top right there. Tighten it, right? Perfect. Then I'm going to get a little piece of paper, right? I think. I'm gonna get a carving tool. Okay, so what they did is they wrote my name in Korean right here. And then what you do is you flip it over, right? And then you get it here. So you have to do it backwards, obviously, because wow, if not, so when you stamp, it will be backwards. Okay, so you have it here, right? And then you get this, divide it, all right? Kind of like the director said, so many people know China and so many people know Japan, but like that. that you know, she did it backwards yeah. right there. You gotta actually go from here to here and then back. But it's okay, so I'll go. And then like this, like that, right? So once you're done, you grab your utensil, right? And you can hold it two ways, either like a pen, or like this, this is the better way because you can go deeper, right? So you get in. So she's gonna help me carve out the first letter. <laughs> she's gonna make it a little thicker, right? Same. Because it has to be a little thicker. You Same. have to really yeah. fill up the yeah. entire stamp. Wow. That's clean. So you carve little by little. What's it called? Okay, good. As she showed me, you go deep, right? You don't go too. You're a pro. Sort of. Like that. Just try to get rid of all the black ink right there. Mine didn't come out so great, but um, I think I'm good. So it's antique. So basically what she's doing is she's finishing it off for me and making it look more like antique. Pretty cool. So now I'm gonna stamp it on a paper. So you do it or I do it? <laughs> <laughs> so in Joseon period, Joseon period scholars, they love to write letters to their friends. So what they did was they made a wood block and with lots of beautiful patterns. And then uh, they put the Korean traditional paper called hanji. And then they made their own beautiful letter set. And then they used uh, brush and black ink and write a letter and send it to their friends. Universal no, 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 my name's Don. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a letter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> so what she did is she put my seal on top of this postcard. And now I'm gonna quickly gonna write a letter to my wife, right? So I put it here. Oh, spray myself with some ink. Get some of the ink, right? Make it super point, right there. All right, so that was our experience at the Korean National Museum. It was amazing. It was My favorite amazing. thing was that part. Oh yeah, making we, a stamp. We get to make our stamp. We got our official stamps for life. <laughs> <laughs> and next up, we're going to eat some chicken and beer. Chimak, 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 chimak. You like it? Chimak. You like I chicken? love it. I love it. And here we are, oven chicken and beer. They got some, what do they got? Looks like some whole garden. So we got some German beer. I really yeah. want some Korean beer and some Korean fried chicken. KFC, let's go inside. And I cannot wait to eat some fried chicken. Where did everybody go? Where's everybody at? So Angela, what do we have there? <laughs> Cass, is that Cass? Yeah, the drop the beer. So we're starting off with some Cass. This is Korean draft beer. Mm, very light. Gambe. 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 Mm. Ah. It's really good, really light. Mm. Oh yeah. Man, I need some food right now. I need food. I can't wait. The best thing in the world is making fried food with beer. The best. Okay, so we're starting it off with a chicken salad. Looks very nice. So grab a little bit of that. Ooh. We've been getting our vegetables here in Korea. Yeah, lots of veggies, lots of veggies. Oh, I like it. So good. Oh, it's it's got chicken in it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was veg. Pure veg. Mm. Almost like a Caesar salad. Yeah. With pulled chicken. Mm. Very nice. Very crunchy salad. Mm, very refreshing. And that's just the appetizer. We got we got the main stuff coming. We're supposed to pass it down. Uh, so here we have it, KFC Korean Fried Chicken, my first time ever trying it. Here on the right we have like, the glazed version, on the left we have the regular version, and then we have some french fries. Dive into the fries here, I always grab three or four. Mm. Nice and small, huh? Nice, small, crispy. Mm. Where's the barbecue with honey mustard? <laughs> I'm gonna start off with the just regular version. I actually love wings, by the way. Wings are my favorite. All right, there. Oh, let's just dive in. Whoa. Mm. Isn't that good? Whoa. <laughs> Dude, this is the freshest chicken I've ever had in my life. It's so fresh. Inside is so juicy. Oh my gosh, like falling apart. So tender. Oh. And then on the outside, it's super crispy. Holy shit. Dude. <laughs> mm. I know. You just, feel, you just keep popping them, huh? It's so good. So good. Mm. I mean, KFC has some real competition here. <laughs> oh wow, man! I love the grease. It's not like crazy grease. Just in the right amount. Nice crispy. Mm. My God. Once you're done with the fried chicken. Oh, so good. Amazing. Amazing. No, I'm not I'm not doing it for camera. Like I'm like, this is mine. <laughs> Next up, I'm just grab a little drumstick from the glaze. Oh man, this look at this. This is so good. Here we go. Mm. It's almost like sweet and sour chicken in a Chinese restaurant. Oh my god. Wow. Do you wow. like one more than the other? This one's way better. Yeah. Mm. The Golden no. Glaze is amazing. This one is way better. I'm like in love with this one. Oh man. It really is like a sweet and sour sauce. It's like a little sweet, a yeah. little spicy. Mm. This is the best fried chicken of my life. Korea is blowing me away. It's just so different from the rest of Asia. You know, you have a lot of noodles in China, you have a lot of rice. In Japan, here you have like a big mix, a lot of pork, a lot of chicken. Wow, man! Out of control. <laughs> oh man! 
Gumbe! Chimak! <laughs> we got a little surprise here. We got some soy sauce chicken. Looks a little richer, like a little darker, right? It looks more brown. Mm. Whoa. Dude. Soy sauce is like over abundance here. Wow. Mm. I love what I got. I don't even know what this is. It's like a wing, a drum. Thing. What the hell was this? Let me go for one more, man. Okay. Too good. It's too good. <laughs> so it's a, you know what's a little, a little spicy? Oh wow. So the best one for sure is the like sweet and sour one. Then you get the soy, then you get the regular one. Then you have the salad. Salad was really good as well. With the beer. Where, where's the soju? <laughs> We've got soju. That's like that's the next round. It's gonna be mm. another beer mixed with soju. Oh man. Oh. All three are amazing. All three flavors. This is the best of the best. Sweet and sour. This glaze, if they just gave me a bowl of this glaze, I would lick it up with my tongue. That's how good it is. <laughs> and it, the chicken is just like next level tender, man. Oh, man. This is just like, this is the best. This is the best. Mm. Oh. Loving it, man. So this is soju? This is how it started? Somehow? For you. Thank you, sir. Cheers, sir. Gumbe. Definitely sweeter. It's almost, sweeter right? it's almost like a mix between a sake oh. and a beer. That's really good. I've never mixed it before. I can't believe I didn't do that when I lived in Korea. Another one? I've known about this, but I've never <laughs> tried it that way. Crazy. It's called honey soju. What, uh, honey soju. Okay. okay. So that were like that was mixture mix of soju and beer, right? But this time. We're just gonna put a little bit of beer into a cup of soju. So this is quick, this is one shot. Gambe, this is mostly soju. Gambe. It's light, pretty light. It's definitely made it light. If we just did pure soju, it would be a far more of a burn. It's not sweet enough until you can drink right away. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. vodka. It yeah. is vodka. It is, it reminds me of vodka. But it's like a Korean potato, vodka. potato vodka, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm about to try soju on its own. Basically, vodka made out of potatoes. Is that right? Potatoes? Yeah, I believe it's potatoes. That's okay. not right. Yeah, it's, so it's only 20%. Vodka is 40%. So it's a lot lighter, but it has that taste of vodka. Yeah. But usually when I drink vodka like this, I don't feel good. No. This is really nice. This is almost like a sake, but different because sake is obviously rice wine. I'm gonna sleep well tonight. There you are. <laughs> That's your nightcap, man. Nightcap. <laughs> Anybody else have a bottle? All right, all right. What a day. Korea what National a Museum. Day, man. Korea National Museum. <laughs> Chicken and beer, soju, yeah, soju. A mix of it all. You know, it's it's good because you don't get drunk. No, you just feel good. You just feel really good. And <laughs> we're leaving at the right time. If we kept yeah. going, then we wouldn't feel so good. No, we wouldn't feel <laughs> good at all. But I love the Korean fried chicken. Yeah. The KFC is ridiculous. It's, amazing. it's so fresh. And just want you guys to know that you know, there's 50 million people in this country. Yeah. 25 million people live in the capital where we are right now. Yeah. And all that chicken is real organic it's not made in factories at all so no impressive, steroids huh? so Man, impressive so impressive i mean it's real it's real when it's real you yeah. know it's good you know it's good exactly i really really love that chicken and the National Museum. I mean, everything today was so good. Yeah, man. What a day! So changing my life. Hey, man. hey, it's just our first day. First we day. Got a lot of time. We got a lot left to do. <laughs> All right, guys. If you love this video, give me a thumbs up. You know what to do. Leave a comment below if you've been around Seoul, South Korea, and if you haven't, tell me what you want to do here. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, subscribe to my boy Sam and Audrey. Thanks, man. To me, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure. Where have you been? Where have you been?
What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been Here in Seoul, South Korea. Today we're doing something really cool. We're gonna do a DMZ spy tour, which is basically the demilitarized zone, the heavily, the most heavily guarded area in the world. You have US, you have North Korea right there on the border, and we're gonna stop at a few different destinations, then we're gonna have some lunch. Are you guys ready? We're ready. ready. In the back of the vehicle. Das Gras ist grün. <laughs> Der Himmel ist blau. <laughs> this is our first stop. It's where Kim Sun Jo incident happened, which basically was an incident in 1968 when 31 spies from North Korea crossed over into South Korea with the mission to kill the South Korean president. So what happened? They made it here. They had a huge shootout between the South Korean police and them. 29 of those spies died. Uh, then one escaped to North Korea and one got captured and he was the snitch and his name is Kim Soon Jo. And yeah, that's that's one of the biggest incidents that's happened between North Korea and South Korea and it happened right here. So the guy, Kim Soon Jo, he basically got captured. He was a snitch. He told, everything, he told South Korea everything that North Korea was gonna do. He then became a pastor of a church and now he's still alive and is a TV celebrity star. Whoa. Kim Sim Joe, the snitch made good. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna get back into the car and go to our next spot. It's we're gonna see more places like this, more you know, incidents that happen between North and South Korea. Yeah, this is this is way more than just a normal tour. Normally you just get brought to the joint security area and this this way we're learning a lot more about the history. So our second stop of the day is this memorial to the chief of police during that assassination attempt on the president in 1968. So he was one of the guys who lost his life protecting the president. As you can see, it's a very you know historical spot, very sad moment in the history of South Korea. But you know this guy's a national hero. And this is a driveway, yeah, to the yeah, to the top of the mountain. Next up, we are visiting Pagakjeon, which is an octagon pavilion, and we are going to get some amazing views of Seoul from up here, including Bukhansan Mountain off in the distance. Bukhansan, he actually hiked up there. I did, I did, like three years ago. Man, that, probably that's... a little slimmer, a little, bit, little less like <laughs> that, winning the that's food. That's a big hike, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's really cool right now. I mean, we're really high up. Yeah. This is probably one of the highest points in the city, it, right? Yeah, it's a, it's it's a different climate over here. Like it's definitely it's considerably cooler. Yeah. I'm loving the views here. On this side, it looks more like a small town, but yeah. beautiful green, love the mountains, very lush, and uh, yeah, it really looks small here. It, it's super peaceful, and it's still technically part of Seoul, which is fascinating, because you think of Seoul as a big, sprawling, modern city, but on the outskirt areas, you have mountains like this. And that's like a super luxurious area, for sure. Oh, yeah. And then over here. And over here, you got the tower, Namsan Tower. Yeah, we have. It's like basically the bullseye of the city. The bullseye right there, right there. and there you really see Seoul. Yeah. Biggest city in Korea, obviously, capital, but half the population of the country is right here. 25 million right here. Wow, man. that's unbelievable. What a great lookout point. I love it. I mean, I wish they didn't have all these like wires. <laughs> yeah. I wish we were a little yeah. higher. Yeah. But still beautiful. Wow, this is amazing. It is. Damn, it's a huge city. Such a big city. Dude, it reminds me sort of a Tokyo, but now with this like, in here you have some cool mountains. It, it, Very hilly right it's, there. It's, it's a city that goes up. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a high rise city for sure. All right, guys. So now let's go to the border with North Korea. It's going to be like a one hour drive. You guys ready? I'm ready. Uh, the next place is the Odosan uh, Unification Tower. So we've arrived in Paju and right across that river is North Korea, two and a half kilometers away. Dude, we're here. This is the joint security area. So we're gonna go in. Let's go inside. You can compare uh, the two, two lands. Okay. Yeah. So that's North Korea there, and what's yeah. that over there? Yeah, this is, uh, it belongs to South Korea. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, they're a uh, forest. And then they're all almost uh, desert like there. Wow. Yeah. So can you guess why? <laughs> Looking at it from afar, it just looks like I could get a canoe and just canoe over. Like it's only two and a half kilometers. It doesn't look that intense. But apparently it is. If you do that, they're gonna shoot you. Obviously, down. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. But it just doesn't look that as intense as I thought it would look. Yeah, I mean the biggest difference that you see is that it's completely flat because they're cutting all the trees. Obviously, that's yeah. for energy, basically, and farmland, right? Yeah. 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 There you go. It's a different world. A different if you world. were born two and a half kilometers that way, your life is so different if you were born two and a half kilometers on this side. Yeah. One river split dictates a whole different life. In this building, we have the observation decks. There we go, better views of North Korea and the river. 
So the future dream is to reunite North Korea and South Korea, make it one country, and then if they did that, they would take the bullet train to the capital of North Korea, and then cross over to Paris. I mean, that would be amazing if we can go from here all the way to Paris. It would take you forever, but with a bullet train crossing all of China like that. This is a history and photos of all the significant events between the North, North and South Korea, dating back to the 1940s up until present day. And you can see all the ups and downs between the relationships between the two countries. We just arrived to the third level and here we have an observation deck. We have an indoor part, right, and they have a video, and then we have an outdoor observation deck. We are three floors up, so around 40 feet up, and as you can see, that is North Korea. Two rivers uniting right here. It's incredible views. I mean, you really can't tell a huge difference. I mean, the biggest difference between both the lands is that this side, South Korea, you see lots of green trees. Over there, you see you know, almost no trees because it's, it's all been cut down. Okay, so we're on the fourth floor observation deck. As you can see, it's a huge open area and we have these like huge binoculars, right? You can see North Korea. Look over, I mean, basically, it's a lot of empty land. It's a lot of empty land. You see a few people there, some, some bird life. A uh, few houses, but almost nothing. I mean, very flat, and then you have the mountains, right? But that's all you see. Yeah. yeah I mean, I guess it was everything I thought it would be. Yeah. I'm spying on North Korea, look at this. <laughs> look at this. That's, that, the clarity's amazing. Jordan! Welcome back to South Korea. Let's go. This guy's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the observation deck, but now we're actually going to a military base on the border. I don't think we can film inside though. No, probably not. You can't, but you know, a little sneaky sneaky GoPro. Are you nuts? <laughs> yeah, no. He's joking, guys. Yeah. He's joking, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> right here we have the second defense line. As you can see, a lot of tanks. And you said what, $5 million for each tank? Or five billion dollars. Million. Billion. No way, it's billion, man. I, don't know, I heard billion. I don't know, that'd, be, that'd be expensive. <laughs> that would be yeah, real expensive. That tank better freaking fly. I'm telling yeah. you. Okay, so we're three minutes away from the military border, and we have to put away the cameras because you're not allowed to take any photos or videos inside, due to obvious reasons, security and whatnot. So. All right, guys. So we have to put away our cameras. First off, we have to get the passports. Passports, and then put away the cameras. So as we entered the DMZ zone, there was like, you know, mines, a lot yeah. of fence, a really, of really fortified area. Yeah. Really and so, so there's security, we had to hand over our passports, exactly. and then a soldier boarded the vehicle with us. We put on a Korean flag, and then we drove up to here. Yeah, we drove to here. We can take photos and video right here, yeah. but over that hill, you cannot. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually get photos and video with uh, some of the soldiers really quick. Yeah. And then they're probably gonna turn off the cameras. I mean, they were saying there's some spots where we can take photos and video, but most spots you cannot, I mean, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, like For obvious reasons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's go take a photo with the soldiers. Let's do yeah, it. Let's do it. So we've entered a bunker here, and we can't actually shoot looking out the window because that is obviously like a DMZ zone, but we can show you the inside of this bunker. And uh, it's a little tight here. This way, all right, go down. So I'm entering Whoa. Into the so we cannot shoot out this. Oh my god, so just fence green. No, 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 I'm no, it's a video, it's a video. I'll video. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh my god, so. so once we pass the bunker, we walk along the border. So we walk along the southern border, and then it's like two kilometers in between the northern border, and in the middle, or it's like the fence, right? But in the middle is the actual border, so you have a you know, a little space in between. It's like a lot of nature, just like streams and stuff. Yeah. We pass by some guard posts. Then we finally made it here to this building and here we had an observation deck and a map that showed how many different guard posts there are and shows you how the border goes. And once we we're done, they gave us a certificate of completion right here. So I officially have been to the border with North Korea. Amazing. So we entered this DMZ experience zone. Oh my God, <laughs> so don't you dare. <laughs> so we could try on some uh, some army uniforms and we can also play with some guns. Obviously plastic. <laughs> bang, bang. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what you have on for me is like, that's Russia. Is it nice? It's very really nice. You look like a soldier. Yeah. A so Russian we, we, soldier. Which must do the soldier like me in the army? I would like to. 
You, you know you look like an Israeli soldier right now. Oh, you like Dio Chido. Oh, that's it. Dio Chido. You wanna mess with me? <laughs> Before we go to lunch, we're stopping here at the spot where the 31 North Korean soldiers crossed into South Korea in 1968. As you can see, this is what they look like, yeah. their uniforms. They were ca camouflaged as South Korean soldiers. And uh, yeah, this is the exact area. Wow, and as you can see right here, you can see how they just like cross through the fence. They cut it with some pliers and crawled through. And you can also just write on a ribbon. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go have some duck Korean barbecue here yeah. on the border. It's about a 30 minute drive. Yeah. So. It's locally known as Ori. And yeah, it should be really good. This isn't, uh, I think this is more of a special type of barbecue. It's not as typical as some other things. After a quick 30 minute drive, we finally arrived to this restaurant. All we see is a duck outside. <laughs> we don't know the name, but you said it's Ori? Ori. Ori. Hungry. So duck there. barbecue, let's go eat. Good. Cannot wait. Duck being served on the grill. We have just started. They just put all this stuff. As you can see, it looks incredible. Lots of fat. You gotta wait, dude. <laughs> she has to flip it for us. So she's here. She's gonna flip it for us. She's gonna cut it up. You know, make smaller pieces. And then we have some of this red sauce. I love this sauce we had the other night. The samjang. The samjang. Yeah. Then we have a miso soup. It looks more like a tofu miso soup, right? Garlic. 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 It's very nice. So what we do here, similar to what we did the other night, basically we're gonna get lettuce. You're gonna put the duck inside. Put garlic. Put that sauce and eat. Yeah. I didn't know that. You ready you for know? it, Jordan? I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna teach you. <laughs> I'm ready. Lettuce. Okay, I like the idea of dip it in the sauce. That's this one, so this is like a sesame oil sauce, but I like it with this one. This one's really good, right? Yeah. Go with this red one, put it here, big chunk, get some of that garlic, right on top. And then some onion and kimchi is also. Yeah, you mix it in. Well, I'm just gonna do it like this first, make it into this nice little cube, right? I'm struggling, man. You're struggling to pick it up. Garlic, bro. You're you're a bad Asian. <laughs> I am, I am, I am, I own that. Alright, so you roll it up, right? You ready? One one bite. Cool. One bite, the whole thing? The whole thing, one ready? Biter. Pop it, boys. <laughs> mm. Nice. Mm. Is it good? Mmm. I love it, Doc. Mmm. Mm. Nice and fatty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doc is tends to be chewy. Very chewy, very tender. Mm, I love this sauce. The red one, dude. I can just like dip my chopsticks in. It's like. That is good. And he says that chicken. You get some more? I'm gonna try some of this. That's uh, called chopche. Chopche? Yeah. There you go. It's like Chinese Korean food, right? Art. A little bit. Let's try it down. Mm, that's impressive. Delicious glass noodles, man. And? Right? Yeah, and glass noodles. Then we have a soup. Yep. So the way we eat the soup with the chopsticks, well, you can't do it with the chopsticks. There you go. You can yeah, drink this. You can drink it directly, man. So you dip it in, and then you get a little bit of juice. So you just do this for <laughs> a few hours you of it. this. <laughs> and then that's good. Nice mushrooms, too. Good. So overall impressions pretty good so far? Well, yeah, I'm going round two straight round up, two. so it's really good. You guys I like also it. just take it straight too, you know? Mm. Just savage, man. Mm. Just goes for mm. it. Yeah, um, yeah, very chewy. But I love how it's like that. The smoky taste, the charcoal. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Good stuff, huh? Wow. All right, so this Korean barbecue is amazing. What really makes it great is that there's so many different side dishes. Banchan, so we've got pickled cucumbers over here. We'll have seaweed, grab a bite of that. There we go. Wow. Oh, it's a mm. Oh, it's a huge fish. <laughs> we've got onions, we've got garlic, and we've got kimchi, which is a fermented Korean cabbage. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that, a little bit of garlic. Mm. Still chewing on the seaweed. <laughs> mm. oh, so good. Nothing tastes quite as good as cooked garlic, I gotta say. Of all the sides, my favorite is the seaweed. It's like very like, thick seaweed. It's a little different than wakame. Oh my god, how do I even eat this? Mm. Good. Way better. So we've been cooking the kimchi now for a while, so I'm just gonna flip it so you can see. It's been a little bit lighter color. When it's been cooked a while, you wanna have it 
a few black marks are okay. They obviously don't want it to be too black. You know it's cooked when it's kind of, it's become a little bit more pale. It's gonna be piping hot, so I'm gonna blow on it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Gimchi does cook, in my opinion, of like 10 times better than when it's just served raw. What an epic day we've had up here on the DMZ Spy Tour. We visited Paju, which is basically the border between South and North Korea. We did a DMZ tour, you know, really cool learning about the history you know all the conflicts that they've gone through between you know 1950 to now and now you know it's, it's basically like a peace border it's a peace tour and then we came out here and we had some delicious korean duck barbecue lots of delicious sides i love the vegetables here in korea it's really blowing my mind and every time we eat we eat something different which is so awesome well guys i hope you love this video if you did please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below turn to my channel Subscribe to us. Sam and Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you in the next trial food adventure in South Korea. Peace. What's up everyone? This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in Seoul, South Korea. Today we have a cool mix of things to show you. We're gonna go first to the War Memorial Museum to learn about the 1952 to 1953 Korean War. And then after this, we're gonna have some dinner. We're gonna have Buddhist temple food. I've never tried it before. I'm very excited. Let's go inside the memorial and learn about the history of Korea. I personally love, I love memorial, like war memorial museums. Yeah. It's, they're amazing. It's fascinating to see all the different military technology and how it's progressed over the years. Especially like for me, I, I find it fascinating the 20th century. Yeah. I, I mean, I love everything. I mean, in terms of history, this room that we just entered is full of old cars and really old yeah. planes. Right here we have like huge cannons, we have a tank, nice little buggy right there. That's like a little... It's like uh, a doom buggy. It's like a doom buggy. <laughs> wow, look at this, really cool. And this, so th these two cars are from the presidents, right? From yeah. old school presidents. Those look vintage. Super vintage. I love the tank, man. What is this, 1939? The Soviet T-34 was developed in 1939. It was one of the best tanks in World War II. North Korea People's Army employed some 242 of these main battle tanks during the Korean War. Dude, this is sick. This one's awesome. This is a pretty impressive collection over here. I really like, well, the tank is just unbelievably big. You really get a sense of scale walking up next to it. And then you also have some old vintage warplanes as well. And some like amazing cars. Well, let's go up into this plane right here. What is this, a MiG-15? Yeah. Wow. Check this out. Oh, it says do not, go, don't go up. It says it? <laughs> Literally, yeah. No, I think it says do not like get go on top. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to the third level of the museum and here we're gonna enter the Korean War room. So the Korean War actually started in 1950 and in 1953. A lot of countries helped out, the UN came in and the first thing we're gonna enter here is like a mini memorial of all the countries that participated in the United States, Colombia, Australia, who else, Great Britain, I mean so many different countries and right here we can see all the people who lost their lives in this war. Really sad, really really sad. So one of the most interesting things that you can see over here is the collection of different weapons they have. These in particular are I believe rifles and then around the corner over there you have the different army uniforms of every single country that was a participant in the Korean War. It's very fascinating to see how the uniforms differed between each country. Yeah, so, you know, obviously the United Nations came in to help and that's made up of how many nations? I don't even know, it's like... It's a lot. Now it's a lot, but back then yeah. it was way less. A lot, so, of, a lot of Commonwealth nations, Canada was involved, Australia was involved. Um, Great Zealand, Britain, US. Great Britain, yeah, yeah. Actually, well, there's, there's, there was a lot more involvement than I think a lot of people realize. Okay, so in this room, besides just showing you, you know, all the different uniforms that all the countries had, it also tells you how many people were involved from each nation. So U.S., we had one point, almost 1.8 million soldiers and 36,000 fatalities. And you can see, you know, obviously all the clothing here, all the uniforms. You can see some of the weapons they use. These are some huge weapons, rocket launchers, got AKs, got machine guns, the handguns, knives. I mean, these guys are really prepared for war. Wow, this is, this is really, really fascinating. I mean, wow, 50 caliber machine gun. Do you saw the machine gun here? 
So we just finished visiting the Korean War Memorial. Incredible place. Learned a lot about the Korean War. We also saw a lot of the, you know, artillery, who was involved in the war. Yeah, uh, old uniforms. Old uniforms, the, the armory. I mean, just like all the different types of weapons. Yeah. The tank, I mean, really incredible. But next up, we oh, got man. dinner. We got dinner. We got a Buddhist oh. temple feast. So excited for that. You've been enjoying the vegetables in Korea, so you're gonna oh. get a whole lot of vegetables today. Oh, I can't wait. I'm sure it's gonna be tofu and soup, yeah, man. veggies. I mean, probably no meat, so it's gonna be veg. No non-veg, just veg. If I remember correctly, this type of meal it was very mindful eating in the sense that everything that you're served, you're supposed to finish. You don't leave a drop of soup or a morsel of rice. All right, so we made it here. This restaurant has monastic Korean cuisine. So monastery cuisine. As you can see, we have a monk right here. My buddy, oh, you can't touch it, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go inside, I'm really hungry. All right, so here we go. We're starting off with three different appetizers. Here we have yeah, like a rice a porridge with some peanuts, right? This is a kimchi soup, has a little like red chili right there. Really and then this You're looks American, like, the yeah. like a date, a, a big yeah, cherry. A wow, that's <laughs> incredible. That's the mystery one. That's the mystery, right? right. So yeah. this is the, it actually these little smells like almost like a peanut butter oatmeal. Whoa, look at that. Okay, that's not the wrong thing. All right, here we go. It's like a beetroot, but it's got a little... It is like an oatmeal. It's a rice, you know? Ricey. Mm, a little bit of veggies. I don't know what that is exactly. Nice, like, peanut butter flakes. I'll be careful so I don't... Like peanut flakes? Mmm. Oh, I love it. Next up, we have the kimchi. There's over 200 different types of kimchi. This is one of them, okay? So we're gonna dive into this. Yeah, it's basically the national dish. So, you eat it with every meal. <laughs> I'm feeling more zen now. This one's a little wild. I think a little potent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hit me hard. It's quite sour, isn't it? Mm, quite sour. It's actually mm. in Seoul. It's decent. I mean, I can eat it. We have this like used cherry, okay? Mm. Mm. You know what it tastes like? What? Is this just a white bread? It's almost like a big tomato. It just burst in my mouth. Yeah, it's juicy, mm. man. But you're right. Similar to a lychee. Mm -hmm. mm. But also has like grapey taste to it. This is like. How is it? Oh, that's good. That's good. I think I'm gonna go back and just drink some of this though. <laughs> what do you like the sour? Did you wake yourself like up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. fun sour, man. Right, good. Good stuff. And that's it. That's our whole meal, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. I think it's a really uh, tasty appetizer course. Nice and light, refreshing. And after having a big barbecue for lunch, this is the perfect kind of meal to be having right now. All right. So next up, we have four different dishes. Here we have a bean curd. Here we have a kimchi pickle, right? Right here. Yeah. Next thing, mung bean jelly with lotus fruit, and then next to it we have a green leaf. Yeah. So first up, let's grab some of this. Grab some of this. Got a little bit. Wow. Oh my God. Super like gelatin like. Look at that. Over there. Right? Oh, this green leaf looks really good. No, kimchi cucumber, sorry. Right? This is also very bland. I don't love it. No? Yeah. Next. Mung bean jelly. Look how gelatin like that is. Not a tofu because it's not as soft as tofu. It's more like a thick consistency, right? Yeah. Very compact. Pickle. Jiggly. It's like a pickled pickle. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Or a pickled cucumber. I don't know, man. This is not your favorite course. It doesn't have a lot of taste to it. Very bland. Yeah. I think it needs some spice or something else. No, the cherry tomato was pretty. Next up, we're gonna get some of this leaves. I think that has a sesame seed. Oh wow! Oh wow! This is the taste of like a. Aftercake to it. Not a traditional. Like a non-ripe mango inside. Oh wow! Yeah, very sour. Just plain food right here. Not that much flavor. It's earthy. <laughs> Next up with the bean curd. And this I know I'm gonna love. I don't often dine. Again, not that much taste. No. You know what's good? It's like a... Oh, I skewer. That's the, that's yeah, it has a porridge yeah, like consistency too. It's like a porridge, but it's not ricey at all. It's, it's like tiny, like mini grains in a way. 
It could almost be like like a watered down mashed potatoes. Decent. So here we have the main course. We have like one, two, three, four, five different dishes. This one actually has four. It has two Korean pancakes, one mushroom dumpling, tofu, and then here we have another veg. Here we have some noodles, right? And this I think is more mushrooms. Yeah, maybe she's talking mushrooms. She's talking mushrooms. I'm not sure, but it might be. <laughs> Let's start with this. Your metal chopstick ability. It is hard to pick up noodles with metal chopstick. Not mushroom. It's, it's like a plant thing. Mm. It's almost like a maduro. Uh, but they're spicy. Oh wow. You like those? Yes. Oh my god. Fresh. Mm. Delicious. I love the glaze. Yeah. Mm. Some more flavor with this round. Yeah, super flavorful this one. So it almost feels like a sweet and sour in a way. Mm. But it for sure is like a platano. So like a Right here. Planting. Right here. Sorry, plat I know. My noodle. <laughs> now I'm gonna jump onto the noodles. Oh my god, it's like stuck. Wow. I've never seen these noodles before. It almost is like like wheat noodles or like buckwheat noodles, right? Wow. What is this? So specialized. Super cold. Oh wow, this one has mushrooms. It's a little creamy. I don't know exactly what this is. A little spicy too. Mmm, very nice. So mix it up, right? So mix it all together. Oh wow, look at that. Straight to the mouth. Okay, the purple. It's gotta be pickled. Mmm. Oh, delicious noodles. Dude, I love the spice on this one. Okay, next I'm going for something I love, which is the tofu. I'm gonna take this off. I don't know what that is. Okay. Oh yeah. Which one you want to go? This to tofu looks very tofu. different. Yeah. It's, it's a normal. thicker one. Yeah, it is very thick, very dense. Mm. Almost no flavor though. It's partially dipped into this. <laughs> but the theme here in like the monastic, monastic uh, food is that it's very veggie, but almost no flavor. This is the most flavorful thing in the house. Got a mushroom dumpling here. Gonna dip in here. Oh, it's strong. It's a big dumpling. It's yeah. so afterwards. Mm -hmm. This one that I can't pick up. Yeah, right. Oh, nice. Mmm. Very earthy. A little this warm inside. Mm. So this one looks more like a spinach pancake. This one, I don't know exactly what it is. Let's see. I like the dumpling. You like the what? There's like a potato with onion pancake. We're slowly building it. Oh. Mm, it's very filling. Mm, I love it. And this is like the spinach one. It's, mo it's not really spinach. I mean, there's lots of different vegetables. You got something red right there. I'm gonna go in here. Get a little spice, right? Video tutorials. And like, is it teacher? Like, whoa. Before. Lots of herbs. So it's very much like methodical. Very nice. A straight veggie pancake. So here we have a root. We will work through it together. Yeah. Like Almost has a texture of bamboo. bamboo I was watching one time too. So. Okay, it might actually be bamboo. It might be. Right, then it just talks normal. Add something yeah. like a coating like, of hey, something so a little yeah. spicy. Oh, so this is a lotus root. Wow, nice and pink. I love pink. <laughs> nice and crunchy, refreshing. All this content is so mm. like, oh, I love it. All right, here we have our fourth platter of dishes, right? So we have soybean paste soups, actually five years fermented soybean paste. Here we have a lotus leaf inside we have rice, so sticky rice, Ooh, really hot. And then here we have, what is it called? Banchan? Banchan, five kinds of banchan. Five types of, five types of banchan. Banchan are side dishes. Here we have two kimchi, and we have two greens, and this looks like very spicy mushrooms. So, what else do we have? We have some mushrooms. Oh, that looks really good. Oh, wow. A little intense. Intense? Yeah, let me see the soup alone. It's like a veggie soup, right? Yeah, yeah. Mmm, very nice. Oh, I love it. Rich broth. The meal or the trip? Super rich. It also feels like cucumbers, but that's actually a soybean paste. It's very fermented, like it's very intense, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, I'm gonna hold off, but I like it. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna open this guy. Just rice. Oh, and there's like something on top. What is that? Yeah, it's like two beans and a pine nut. Yeah, pine nut. So the best thing to do is grab some of the rice. Which one do you think? This one? Yeah. So I'll grab this kimchi first. <laughs> a little strong. Mm -hmm. mm. Next one, we get a green. Try something different. Change up the flavor and the palate. 
It's nice, but it's also very bland. Yeah. All right, so here, we're gonna dive into this. This is gonna be my favorite, I know, because it's very spicy, as you can see. And I know there is an international men's day, but there's no emphasis on it because it was not herb, no spicy. I love it, man. Because it was like under <coughs> Coughing. It's a good sign. <laughs> now we're going for another kimchi. So I guess some of this. Oh, this one has like multiple layers here. Mm, very nice. Crunchy, very moist. Like burst it out with water. Mm. That seems tastes like a like a water kimchi. Yeah. Like, that, does that exist? Yeah, right. Yeah, there's actually one called mool kimchi. And then right here we have some more herbs. Yeah. Some more yummy green herbs. Then we have day off even for mm. international holiday. There's a children's thing. It's another herb that tastes like nothing. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> here they like eating things that taste like nothing. I don't know why, but obviously it's very vegan. No, almost no spices. Yeah, there's a blend. There's it has a, nothing to do with it vegan. It's blend. No, I'm just saying it's very vegan. It has a simplicity to it. Yeah. Just yeah. ruining my video. <laughs> <laughs> Simplicity, exactly. Sim it's simple food. Simple home food. My favorite thing is for sure this soybean, the soybean paste. I am extremely full. So far, we've had I think like 20 something different little things. Yeah. Next up, we have dessert. Wow. And that's it. That's it. Wow. Done. More. This is the most simple dessert of all time. Two dried out kiwis. Yeah. And like this, like. I think this is like a red tea. I don't know what it is. It's like some red water. Okay. Is it sweet? At all. Not Nothing. at all? Dude, it's just like straight water with like a little bit of tint into some type of like bark or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> here, here we have two kiwis. Dried kiwis. Dried kiwis. Mm. I love it. I love dried fruits, so I'm game for this. I like some more. Too like, little, too little for me. It's like cute, but like just in Australia, it's not a little bit. Oh my god, what a meal! Yeah, what a meal! I think it's a little too much. Um, overall, not my favorite. No. Wow, that meal was intense. I am so full. Who knew twenty little vegetable dishes can make you pop? Yeah, man, my belly's popping too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really cool. I mean, it's very simple. At the same time, delicious. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross over to a temple. We're gonna explore the temple, which is right next door, and see what it's all about. Joge Sa Temple. Joge Sa Temple. Yeah, Joge Order. And why do we have all these colors? Ah, this one is for the Buddha birthday decoration. We last uh, May 12th, is a, it was a Buddha birthday. Buddha That's, birthday. Yeah, the decoration. Yeah. Wow. I mean. So probably next week or end of the May, they take up all. Yeah, it's a decoration. And then I recommend to go straight to the main building. You can see the big Buddha statue right there inside the building. Where, where we at? What is it? We are at Yogeza Temple. It's one of the biggest uh, Buddhist temples here in Seoul. Very centrally located. And the neat thing is that we're visiting it at night when everything is lit up. You have all the different colorful lanterns and you also have a really nice view of the Golden Buddhas as well. Yeah, the Golden Buddhas are right in front of us. Can we go up here? Um, yes, but not beyond the rope. <laughs> Okay, look at that. Golden Buddhas, check this out, they're huge. So what a great afternoon it's been. We started off at the Korean War Memorial. We saw, you know, Korean War history. Then we saw some tanks, some artillery. After that, we came here and had a monastic Buddha. What is it? Buddhist meal, yeah. Buddhist meal. Yeah. It was delicious, but at the same time, very bland. I mean, yeah. it, it really is an experience. That's really what it's about. Yeah. Very small plates, over 20 different veggie <laughs> plates. Uh, no onions, no garlic. It's very simple. simple My favorite yeah. thing was that like glazed mushroom. Yeah, same here. That's the best thing ever. A couple other people said that too. That and, was amazing. Yeah, I mean, just incredible. And then literally across the street, we have this temple and it's yeah. like lit up. The best time to come here is at night. Yeah. So you can see so many lanterns i mean we have every color and it's just gorgeous we have a huge fire over here burning yeah. so if it's too cold go over there warm <laughs> go up, warm up. <laughs> it does cool off at night it does it does yeah. it got a little chilly that's why i put this on <laughs> and then we went all the way over there and we saw the big golden buddhas and it's a beautiful tree in the middle 
And yeah, I mean, this is an awesome spot. You gotta visit this temple for sure. When you come to Seoul, it's one of the best temples. It's the biggest, right? It's the biggest in the downtown area for sure. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. And subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. Subscribe to his channel. Thanks, man. And we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea. What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been here in super hot Seoul, South Korea. Today we're doing something amazing. We're gonna dress up in some traditional Korean clothing. It's called hanbok. Then we're going to the palace, and then after that we're gonna go eat some delicious food. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Are you guys ready? Let's go inside and get some clothes. Let's do it. Traditional <laughs> Korean clothing. I'm gonna look like a prince right now, right? <laughs> prince Ali, handsome is he, Ali Ababa. <laughs> <laughs> so we've headed up to the third floor and apparently there's a more interesting collection over here. Maybe they've got some custom stuff for us. We'll find out. Okay, so let me see. Okay, I like this one. So this is the outer? Yeah, outer. Nice. You know what? Blue, the gold, you got the dragon right here. Looks classy. The dragon, that's actually a good thing in China. I don't know about Korea, but in China, yeah. that means like... Dragon's like the boss, right? It's the emperor. The emperor. Basically, it's the empire, the emperor. Right? And uh, yeah, I'm still missing the inner layer, which is like another t-shirt, a white yeah. one, and then the bottom. I think the bottom either is this color or gold. Hopefully they have more gold. Oh, ta -da. So white, for sure, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, perfect. That goes good because the belt, I love that pink. So blue and pink. Whoa, I'm looking really royal right now. You're gonna look pretty in pink. <laughs> Alright, let's get dressed. I'm really loving the blue, pink. You got a really cool color. He has like a... It's like gold and teal, I think. Gold and teal? Yeah, it looks like a greenish aqua, right? Yeah, That's yeah, sort of yeah, what yeah. it is. We have to go back downstairs, get changed. Changing room? Wow. Looking beautiful. Thank you. Wow, incredible. They didn't like the camera. <laughs> okay, here we go. We are gonna wear... Yeah. Pants first. Okay. And the shirts, and the vest. So. So pants first, then the yeah. rest. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. Do it look good? Looking royal. Good, this is the royal right here. The dragon. It means you're part of the royal bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So this is basically what people wear when they go to the palace. If you wear this and you go to the palace, you get in for free. Even though it's not that expensive to get in, yeah. it's really nice to go there, take photos with this, and look really like you know, like a noble. A noble. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> Korean noble. I'm jumping back to the 17th century. But I look good. I feel good. I you like good. the pink mixed with the blue and yeah. the gold and the white. I mean, it, ma it matches my eyes perfectly, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it comfortable, man? It's comfortable. It's funny because they told me to take off all my clothes and put it on. Yeah. But half the people here kept their clothes on. But I think Dude, it's she dressed. Hot. She dressed me with my clothes on. But I think it's way too hot. I think it's way too hot. Way too hot. I've got my shorts and I've got a shirt on underneath this shirt and that shirt. Three layers, man. That's crazy. The hat. Too Yo, much. the hat is the best part, dude. And it's like the only way it stays on is if you tie a bow tie, right? Just like this. Otherwise, it just like falls right off. It doesn't <laughs> actually fit on the head properly. Uh, FYI, so we rented this gear. Yeah. We have to return it. So we're wearing it today. We're gonna wear it for dinner. But it has to come back all in one piece, or you buy it. Yeah. And pristine. yeah, pristine, pristine, and basically the palace is right here. Yeah. It's like right outside somewhere. Where are we? <laughs> oh, how do we get out of here? How do we get out of here? <laughs> it's so funny, dude. You look great. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Sam, how are you feeling in that thing? Oh man. It's so cool to be dressed up in it, but I'm like baking in here. Like, <laughs> I'm just sweating profusely. It's oh a big rose, gosh. but you know what? We're gonna, I mean, I'm already wet, I'm already soaked, so let's just enjoy it, right? Yeah. <laughs> See, the biggest difference is that I took all my clothes off. Yeah. He didn't, so he's wearing like hey, they, they dressed pants. me. <laughs> I know no they choice. dressed him. He was in there with me. the lady. I was like, "What's happening I here?" I know. I don't think she. She. I don't think she thought I could do it by myself. So, uh, you know, I've got triple layers. We're now walking outside of the palace. We're about to get to the main gate. Yeah. And there's a lot of people wearing the humbox right now. It's great so to many, see, isn't it? It's, it's amazing. Look, look, right here, right, right there, there, everywhere. Wait till you get inside, dude. So this is the National Folk Museum of Korea. So this is an entrance to the palace, and this was the closest entrance to where we were. So that's why we're coming through here, and I can't wait to enter and see some more people wearing hanbok. You look good, man. So as we enter the palace, as you can see, there's a lot of buildings here. This one is like a Buddhist temple, right? Like a pagoda, and right next to it, there's like a performance right now. They're playing the drums. Let's get over there. 
Yo, that's amazing. Crazy. I, love them. I, love them. I mean, this guy, though, they're two pilgrims. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of people are taking pictures of us, too. Yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, right here. Hey! Yeah. Everybody, everybody loves it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're some of the only people dressed right there. I know. No I one know. else is dressed up. It's too funny. I'm really it's enjoying funny. this experience, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and we're in. It literally costs nothing. I mean, we didn't even have to get a ticket. Free, absolutely free. If you're normally gonna pay 3,000 won, so roughly 3,000 US dollars, if you're just working yeah, normal dollars. civilian clothes. Three dollars. Three dollars, that's it. Three dollars, <laughs> and we got it for free. Love it. Yeah, I mean, and we got some information here. So let me just tell you quickly about this palace. It was actually built in the year 1395 as the main palace, the principal one of the royal palaces built for the Joseon dynasty? Joseon, yeah. Joseon, 1392 to 1910. Wow, I didn't know that. Wow. The palace was destroyed by a fire in 1592. Yeah. What else happened here? There's over 500 buildings. Huge, dude. Oh my God, huge. This complex is absolutely massive. And right now, I mean, in total of things you can actually see, I think there's 13 different buildings. I think we're gonna visit like two or three max, yeah. just because the heat is unbearable. I suggest <laughs> definitely coming here early morning hours. It opens at nine. Nine. So be here at nine. Yeah. Right now, it's uh, it's 3.30. Yeah. And it's uh, the hottest day so that, that, that we've experienced so far here. So scorching. Wow, dude. It feels like I just stepped into like 17th century Korea. Yeah, man. This is so beautiful. I love it. So they built the houses like on stilts, right? But on these huge block stilts. Very colorful. They have like these greens, these purples, yellows on the very borders and on all the pillars on the top. Okay, okay, you look good. Look good. <laughs> you look very good. Smile. Smile. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are they Korean? No. Oh. Huh? Malaysia. Huh? America. America. Canada. 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 Yeah. She's from New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. A, a kiwi. Yeah, a kiwi. <laughs> Malaysian superstar. <laughs> This is my new family from Ipoh, Malaysia. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. This palace has been phenomenal. I mean, when you visit here, you should budget yourself a decent amount of time because the grounds are massive and we've just scratched the surface so far. And right here, we're about to enter the pavilion. Yep, there it is. 
So we're walking through this area where there's a pavilion to the right and then the main buildings are inside here. There's one main structure and then lots of housing. I really love these walls. I mean, check this out. You got the stone, you have like the concrete, you have bricks, and you have this like nice, it's sort of like blue tile, but they're all super detailed. What a huge, huge spot. I highly recommend not coming here at this time. It is way too hot. Hey. I love you. I love your outfit. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Where are you from? Miami, USA. And this is the pavilion. I think this is the most beautiful building in the whole place. You can see they have like this huge pond that goes around it. You can't actually go onto it, but this is the place where everybody comes to take photos. You can see everybody that's dressed up like us is here taking photos. Sam, do you agree? Is everyone roasting as much as us? That's the big question. That's the big question. He's a Canadian. He can't handle the he heat. Can't handle it, man. <laughs> I'm not a Miami boy like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to tell you about the main place we were visiting. It is called the Gunjong, literally the diligent governance. Okay, that's what it means. And it was a hall of Gyeongbokgung in which each Joseon ruler and governments were expected to handle state affairs. So basically, state affairs took place in that building. The hall actually boasts what is considered to be the most sumptuous and stately appearance among all structures in this palace. So it is by far the most impressive building. It definitely is, and I mean, it is massive. I mean, check out this crazy terrace, huge stones on the floor, and everybody's here dressed up and taking pictures. And I gotta say, if you come to this palace without doing this, you didn't come to this palace. You did not. Two thumbs down. Two thumbs down if you don't come with the handbook, man. Hello. Hi. You look beautiful. So where we're exiting is actually the main entrance. We entered through the folk museum entrance because it was on that side where we got the, the humbuck. But yeah, I mean, this is really the real entrance and it feels like sort of like the Forbidden City. You know, there's multiple gates. So you exit the main hall, you have a gate, you see another terrace, you exit that, another gate, and this is the city and I don't know where Sam went. So these are, this is a restaurant that specializes in stew. I'm just going to show you the menu here. So if you take a look down here, you can see this galbi tang. It's like beef stew. Solong tang. It's another kind of stew. Doga na, go, doga ni tang? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but why don't we try it, man? It looks like a super local place. It's like middle of nowhere down a back alley. Okay, so what we decided to do is because it's so, so hot outside, we did not want to do any street food. So we came to a small hole in the wall. Well, it's not a small hole in the wall. It's usually like, I don't know, 20 tables. And here what they do is different stews. So we're getting like, what, like? Galbi tang, which is like a beef stew. And we're getting mandu solong tang, which is, we have the, the Korean dumplings. And it's a bit of a light broth stew. So they're going to be very different from each other. And they should be delicious, man. We could probably both share them. And the banchan has arrived, the Korean side dishes. Looks delicious. Ah, mm -hmm. Dude, you know what the best tasting beer is? The one that you have in front of you after you've been sweating for two hours wearing three different layers. That's the best beer you've ever had. Gambe? Gambe. Gambe. Ice cold, baby. Wow. Dude, that's so refreshing. Yeah. I just downed one whole thing. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah. Here we have my little stew feast. I mean, it's not huge, but yeah. it's going to be really filling, okay? So I have soyeon tong, yeah. which is dumpling soup with noodles. Right. I have radish with some red stuff, like red chili paste. Got some kimchi, which I love. Oh my God, I can eat this all day. I got spring onions. I'm going to jump into this one first because I need to eat and here we go. What is this, dude? Whoa! And this is so hot right now. Oh, like, yeah. it's steaming. Yeah, yeah. So I think the best thing to do is, like, get up one of the plates. Oh, <laughs> way too hot. Way oh too my hot. god, oh my god. It's like hot. bursting. Oh, it's like popping. It's popping, man. Mm. How's that? Oh man, what's in here, pork? It's probably pork. It could be some glass noodles. It could be some... Uh... Oh, it's like pork with some herbs. Whoa! Looks super homemade. Oh my god, dude! It's like a giant wonton. So good. <laughs> you have what two or three of them, or? And then we one, have man. like these amazing noodles. Wow. Mm. Look at Look that. that. Just gotta pick them all up, right? Yeah. Well, I'm a noodle fiend. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they're really thin. These actually look like sort of like 
I don't know what what exactly they're made out of. What are the wheat? Yeah, they could be. They, they look they look clear. Yeah, like they that. look clear. That's what I was saying. It's like wheat noodles. They're really hot still, really long. This is how it always is. Like yeah. in Asia, you go to China. Yeah. You go to Tokyo. You get those long like, noodles, huh? Oh man, get after them. Mm. So everything here mm -hmm. tastes like a like a miso soup or a wonton soup. Yeah. With all these things, wow, the taste is so good. Oh man, mm. it looks so good from over here. Dude, this last wonton, wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try some other stuff. So we got spring onions. Yeah. Well, and I love the banshee. So the banshee are the sides, right? Banshee. Yeah, banchan. Yeah, yeah. Banchan. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Super fresh. Wow. Mm. My God, it's spicy. <laughs> May, May oil. <laughs> they made it spicy. <laughs> oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. I like it. It's, yeah. it's really nice. Yeah, matches the oil. So we have the kimchi, right? Yeah. Super spicy, super nice. Oh, dude. Amazing. Mm. Mm. The taste is always the same with the spice level, it varies. I mean, I'm sure every kimchi is different. Yeah. I guess I haven't had it enough to understand it, but it always has that <coughs> that pungent kick. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> need a beer. I need a beer. Wash that thing down. <laughs> oh man, I just love it though. I'm, I'm all into cabbage. Yeah. Cabbage all day. I know, man. Like kimchi, kimchi is really healthy for you too. Mm. Super healthy. The best thing about eating Korea is you lay low on the carbs. Yeah. And right now, obviously, I'm having some noodles. I have some rice on the side. Yeah. But like 90% of their diet yeah, yeah. is like meat yeah. and veggies. Veg. And then oh, right yeah. here we have radish. Yeah. So again, a little one. Maybe a little one of these. Hmm. Very bland. Mm -hmm. but the spice in there is good. So the last thing for you to try, dude, is the broth. The Try broth. the broth. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so I got a spoon, right? Yeah, you might want to add some salt to it. It might be a little bland. Yeah, sometimes so long tongue, a little bland. Hmm. It's nice though. Get some of those onions, like right there. Yeah. Very healthy. Super healthy. I'm so happy that we tried another dish because the cool thing about Korea is like there's a huge variety. I've been to like two Korean restaurants in my life, yeah. and there was like two or three things, you know? Yeah. But here it's like never ending. Those options galore, man. We've barely scratched the surface of Korean cuisine. It's, it's crazy. We've still got some time left to try it more. Oh my God. Can't wait, man. Mm. David, we've been feasting on like delicious Korean stews over here. These tongs have been amazing. So the one that I got is different from yours. You had mandu, mine comes with beef. Check out that bone. Can you hear that? Wow, and I've still got another piece. That's even bigger. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh. The other thing too, we've got mushrooms, we've got glass noodles, we've got chives, we've got onions. There's a lot of things going on. The broth is delicious. I'm gonna try that broth for you guys. Mmm, nice kind of beefy broth. Not overpowering, but very like just, I don't know, it's very delicious. I'll try a mushroom. And of course, the thing that I really need to try of this meat. I'm just gonna grab a huge piece. Look at that, dude. That is a behemoth slice. It's a rib. Oh, dude, it's a rib. Mmm. <laughs> Tender. <laughs> Tender, dude. It's like falling on my top. Of course, to wash it down with some beer. So, if you're coming to Korea, you've got to try the jiggies, you've got to try the stews, the soups and the stews of Korea, because they're absolutely phenomenal. They're reasonably priced. You can pick one up for like six to ten bucks. It's got meat, it's got vegetables, it's got like everything you need. Super healthy, super filling. Yeah, it's just phenomenal food here in South Korea. What oh. a day. What a day, what a meal, what an experience. Oh my God, today's been incredible. I mean, we got dressed with the Hakka. Uh, the hanbok, yeah. The hanbok. Yeah. We chose our hanboks. From head to toe. From head to toe, right? Yeah. <laughs> just our shoes, just our shoes, that's the it. The shoes are the only thing we're missing, but it's okay. Yeah. We couldn't walk around with those shoes. We went to the palace, we saw an incredible palace. That is an experience on its own. Yeah. I mean, if you have at least four hours, in the morning or the afternoon, definitely yeah. do it. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. And you gotta dress up for it. That's yeah. what everybody does. Get get one for free, man. Yeah, come on. Come on, take advantage. It's free. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Promote it. Promote, promote it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we came here to a small hole in the wall next to our hotel and we had a delicious tongue. Tongue, yeah. We had the so long tongue with the mandu, which is your dish. 
and we had the galbi tongue, which is my just the beef. Oh, my delicious, God. man! So delicious. delicious. I popped. Oh. I ate all the vegetables. Yeah. I am like exploding. <laughs> we we finished both of the tongues. Too. Yeah, like we finished all the broth, everything. It's and, that good. And it's, it's funny good. because here they like to drink or eat like soups like that, stews yeah. in hot weather. Yeah. But the beer really cooled me down. Oh, the beer was a lifesaver, man. Oh, so good. The cold beer was the best. Literally the best. Well guys, I hope you love this video. Another incredible experience here in South Korea. I'm really falling in love with this country. I've been blown away. God, unreal, unreal. If yeah. you're coming to Asia, add South Korea to your bucket list. Totally agree, man. I'm super biased, I used to live here, but I love it. I no, love it. I love it, I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, if you love this video, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Comment thumbs up. below, subscribe, subscribe. We'll see you in the next travel food adventure in South Korea. Peace. Peace. Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in Seoul, South Korea. Today I'm doing a convenience store challenge. In South Korea, it's very similar to Japan. They have a lot of convenience stores. They have three main brands. So they have 7-Eleven, which yep. is the biggest. You have Family Mart and you have See You Soon. We're going to 7-Eleven. We have one right next to our hotel and we're doing a 12,000 won challenge, which is basically 10 US dollars. And that's what I would spend to have breakfast usually. I'd probably spend a little more, I'd probably spend like 12 or 15 in Miami, but that's what I think is a, it's a good challenge. My friend Sam just did it, and it looked like a lot of food. He got like eight items. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this one, this 7-Eleven is not huge, but no. it does have a big variety. You got some savory, you have some like sushi, you have, what else? You have sweet, you have drinks. We're gonna go inside and see what we find. 12,000? Let's see, I might go over them. Hopefully not. All right, let's go inside, follow me. And there is literally a convenience store every like ten feet here. In yeah, South I know. Korea. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. You never, you never far away from food. Never. Never. And this one's very, very small, guys. Look how tiny this is. <laughs> Actually, I want to go over here. So follow me over here. So I'm gonna get something very similar to what Sam got, which is like a vitamin drink, right? Yeah. So this one over here looks really good, right here. And it's eight hundred won. Good price too. Good. I, I never drink vitamins just like this. It looks like, to me like medicine. And then over here we have just a lot of sweets. Yeah, this is like a Nutella thing too. Yeah, non-stop sweets. I mean, I personally don't love to have sweets. This looks, I, I don't like this. Like, just like pre sausages, pre-packaged sausages, no way. Yeah. For me, it's more like get something more sushi or like maybe a waffle. Yeah. What else is there here? Mm. You can get coffee drinks too. Okay, coffee, coffee. So I'm gonna get an ice cold coffee. Let me see. This one's probably this good. 1500, what? Okay. These ones are a bit cheaper, dude. 1,100. 1,100. Yeah. It's just, okay. This is one dollar. So this is the maximum. Yeah. The maximum. This one is a cafe latte. So we're at currently we're at two thousand. So yeah. Two thousand. You're doing good. All right, let's go over here. Yeah. And another thing is that here in South Korea, uh, people don't love to be filmed, so we got to be really careful filming here. Yeah. We're just gonna go into our space, you know. Don't let the camera get into anybody's face. Yeah. And just keep it quiet. I'm right. being a little loud. But I have to be. What are the names of these? These are called triangle gimbap. So these are triangle gimbap. Shaped like triangles. Yeah, and it basically it's like a unigiri and it opens the same way. Yeah. I'm gonna go with. So this one is tuna over here. Okay. This is that's the one I tried bibimbap, and this one that's another kind of tuna. This is so gobi. That is a. I think you would like that one. That's red. Has a red sauce and meat pork. So gogi. So gogi. And what yeah. is that? What's the price on this? That is, is I th I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they're like two thousand maybe. Two thousand. Okay, so we're at four thousand. And then yeah. I want to get one of these. I Definitely get one this. of those. Yeah. That's the one I tried. Yeah. Okay. And over here you have tuna. If yep. you like tuna, that's very good. But yours looks thicker, like more meat. So yeah, I might go with the more meat. Let me go for right. that. Yeah. And then okay. is there anything else here I like? Oh, there's rice porridge down here. Yeah, rice porridge, I don't know, this, this is too big. Well, yeah, it's a bit big. And then this is like more, let me see, yeah. well, these are like too big, way you, too big. You want to look at the big section? They don't have any kimchi. <laughs> they must, but I don't see where it is. <laughs> oh, that's kimchi with rice, so that's... Oh, it's too expensive, Yeah, no? a, Yeah, that might blow your budget a bit. <laughs> and what about this one? They're like... Uh, honey rice cakes. Honey rice cakes. And how know. much are they? I have no idea. Might be too much too. Could be. Could yeah, be. I gotta stay under. You can't go. Okay. If, yeah, some things might be way too much. This yeah. is what Sam got as well. This is like a red yeah. bean. Highly recommend that. It's like a jelly bar. A jelly bar. Yeah. So I'm thinking I might be one, two, three, four. Just under, right? This is a pancake that has red bean paste. So 
looks very Korean. Super Korean. I'll go with that. It's another 1,100. I mean, okay. I feel like I'm going over. Maybe one more thing. Let's go see. One Six, more thing. Seven. I think you need maybe two more small things. Two more small things? Yeah. Like, again, because this is a small one. Yeah. It's not that much. Yeah. This, this happened to me in Japan. I went to a small one, and it was, like, not that much stuff. But as you can see, I mean, so many different things. Uh, but everything here looks, you know, like a big meal, and it's oh, not. Oh, something not you might like it. to try, dude. I don't know. It's one of these things. These are uh, uh, seaweed. Do you like seaweed chips? Seaweed chips. Let's go with that. Okay. Okay. My friend, hey, how you doing? So as you can see, I got how many so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven items. Seven items. Just under, huh? So I'm gonna grab porridge. I still have a lot to go, right? I still have like roughly 4,000. That's that's gonna hit you right up. <laughs> Alright, so it came out to 12,000 on the dot. On the dot. Wow, right there. <laughs> like on the dot. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe it. I got exactly 12,000 won worth. I mean, I was just under, so we just threw one more thing into it, and it came it's, out to 12,000. It's seriously crazy. Like, you couldn't have, like, we couldn't have planned that math. Even if we like walked around the whole store, there's no way we could have like figured. No, no, I, I didn't know what half the things cost. So. <laughs> I know. All right, so here we go. Eight different items. I got two drinks. I got a bunch of different things. I got only what one sweet or two sweet, including the the red bean paste yeah. bar. Okay, I'm gonna start from here, make my way that way. I have a few palate cleansers, right? I got sweet in between, savory. Oh my god, I can't wait. I think my favorites are gonna be these two <laughs> because they're seaweed and rice. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start off with this guy. This is the vitamin, so it's what, 500 milligrams right here? Of vitamin C, yeah. Of vitamin C, I've never had it before. This is Beta Ovic, vitamin drink. All right, let's try it. Mm. It's almost like a like a, a power drink, you know? Like one of these yeah. like energy drinks, yeah, yeah. but at the same time it has like medicine. You're getting your vitamin C for the day. Oh, wow. It's a one-shotter. That's it. That's it. Ooh, that's straight <laughs> medicine, man. Yeah. Next up, we got the red bean paste bar. Let's open this up. Oh, right there. Uh, so how do you open this? Like this? Yeah. So it comes in a gold wrapper, and it's it looks like more medicine here. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of red bean paste. I love it when they put it into like like big buns and stuff. It's very nice. It's very gelatin-like, it's very dense, it's very solid, you know? And to the taste, a little bland. Obviously it's red beans, right? I mean, I can eat this as a snack for sure, any time of day, I would do it. So this is Triangle Gimbap. Almost exactly the same as the Unigiri in Japan. And in my last video in Japan, I opened this, I destroyed it. I didn't go through the steps, right? So the steps is one, two, three. So the way it works, go with number one, two, and three. This one, you just open it, so hold it, you see, and you go all the way around, right? Whole thing, that's how you open it. You have to do it this way, or you'll make a mess. <laughs> Next, number two, so pull it off, right? Yep. Right there. And then number three, just pull it off. Like a pro. Like a pro. This one actually has pork with red pepper paste sauce. Should Looks, be spicy, dude. Yeah, it should be really spicy. I enjoy, I love the crunch of the seaweed. This is how you hold it right, like with two handles here. Yeah, you don't get your hands messy. It's, it's an ingenious design. Oh my God. It's spicy, it's sticky. It's not actually called sticky rice, it's another name for it, but it's like really sticky. It's, it's, uh, it's like all like put together, like unified in a good way and I love the crunch of the seaweed. The seaweed's my favorite part. Mm. I can use this for breakfast every day. Every day. <laughs> oh man. I know man, I love that too. It's so good. So affordable too. Only one dollar for this. Can you believe that? It's crazy. Uh, so I, I really, really enjoy this. Mmm. So this is gim, which is basically dried seaweed. It's like a cracker, right? Yeah, you can normally roll that with rice. Hard to open this guy. <laughs> god. Oh my god. Look at this. Oh, it looks, I thought it was squares, but it's not. It's just like little sheets of seaweed. Yeah. Whoa. 
That's some salty goodness, man. Mmm. Oh, wow. Super fresh. Oh, wow. Very salty. Very salty. This feels like a like a super thin wafer in a way. What I would do is I would just grab a lot of them. <laughs> oh my god. That was overloaded. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this. Look how many there are. Yeah, I'm sure this goes really good with some rice. So you have some sticky rice, you have a little sashimi, just wrap it with this. I could eat this all day, man. <laughs> it's air. Oh, wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop. Why would you? So next up, we have this bun with red bean paste and cream inside. This is very sweet. They like their sweets here in Korea. So let's open this up. Wow, look at this bun. This is a different type of bun. This is not the bun that you'll get in China. <gasps> look at the inside. Oh, wow. I'm not gonna have too much of this because it just looks extremely, extremely decadent. <laughs> Probably just fold it like that. <laughs> this reminds me like a, like a super yummy donut from Dunkin' Donuts. Mmm. Rubbing paste with the whipped cream is really good in combination with the super fluffy bun. The inside is very soft. And uh, yeah, I mean, really good. If you like, you know, buns with red bean paste and whipped cream, is your jam. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. All right, enough of that. A little too much for me. That filled me up so fast. Next up we have like this Korean hand roll, right? So the official name is Gimbap. And the way to open it is right here. This one in particular is called Barbecue Bogodi. Okay, so how do I open this? Man, they make these things like impossible to open. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so I'm gonna just grab one of these. Open this up, look at that. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know how much I love Japanese food. This is basically Japanese food, Korean style. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> so marinated beef barbecue. It has a little bit of like a carrot right there. I don't know if that's pineapple. Mmm, delicious rice. So oh, that's probably yellow radish. Oh, it's yellow radish. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I was like, pineapple, no way. <laughs> but it's super delicious, really filling. I mean, if I eat this whole thing, I'll be done. But I love this. I can eat this literally every day. I've been eating sushi since I was like eight years old. I hate that I don't have chopsticks though. Oh, we could have asked for some, but oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, we should have done that. Mm. My, my bad. That was amazing. Really, really delicious. Wow, I loved it, man. A little creamy too. The barbecue, with the creamy taste to it. It was like almost like a smoky barbecue beef. To Korea. Korea's too good to us. Yeah, and next I have like some uh, some porridge. You know, they love porridge here in Korea. This is banjuk rice porridge. Perfect. Let's open it up. I'm gonna open it the ghetto way. I can just push it out. All right there. Oh, it comes with a spoon that you have to put together. That's pretty cool. And you open it up right here. Cool age. Ooh. Oh my God, that looks slimy. <laughs> It's like slime fest. <laughs> slime fest 2019, Korea style. <laughs> so this is gonna be really interesting. The spoon, I've never, ever seen this. Whoa. Whoa. Technology, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it's porridge, but it looks like more of a super ricey, like big rice, got some veggies in there. Wow. Looks healthy. Super healthy, very filling. I know this is not even my jam, but oh, I see. I think this is mussel or something, right? Like something from the sea right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's like an oyster. It's really cold. <laughs> this, is not, this is not my type of jam. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little more. Let me, let me give another chance. It feels like a very soupy rice. That's it. With herbs. It does have seafood in here. That has to be an oyster or a mussel. I can't tell right now. I can't even understand what it looks like, you know? Yeah. Whoa. You know what's interesting about this is when I lived in Korea, if you had, if you were sick, people would bring this to you. Apparently it's good. It's like easy to digest. Okay. Lots of nutrition. Yeah. No, it's very healthy for sure, but disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> nah, disgusting. I'm, I'm messing with you guys. Just not my thing, you know? It's really cold. It's ricey. I mean, if, I think I have to let it like grow on me. 
Yeah, yeah. Wow, I got really full, guys. I mean, I've been eating everything. My favorite thing so far, for sure, was like the sushi, the hand roll. I loved it. The seaweed as well. Everything is so freaking amazing. I destroyed that unigiri. Now, not that unigiri, what's it called? Try and give up. I destroyed it. Yeah. But now I'm gonna have some coffee, and this is called Maxim Espresso Master Latte. Chug, chug, done. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> oh man, one more. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna make a seaweed sandwich. That's the mother of all seaweed sandwiches. Look at that, make my mini beeping bop. Mmm, <laughs> mmm. David, I can't believe I was able to get eight things for under 12,001, less than 10 US dollars. Extremely good value. I'm gonna try three different things for you. So a drink, a savory item, and a dessert. Don't mind the mess I've made. I've already been eating a bit. Um, I finished my vitamin drink, which I like. This one I don't love that much, but it's a yogurt drink. I'm gonna try that here. Mm. Super, super sweet. It's got a bit of an artificial taste. That's not my favorite. It's yogurty. Now the other thing I'm gonna try is the Samgap Gimbap, which is a bibimbap flavor. Red gochujang paste, all kinds of vegetables in there. Um, with a seaweed wrapper shaped like a triangle. I've obviously taken a big bite. Let's try it mm. Oh my gosh, it also has meat in there, dude. I didn't know that it's right in the middle mm. That is delicious. Not only would I have that for breakfast, but any time of day and last but not least For the sweet item is a cheesecake bun super fluffy super airy very light Find that right now sweet but not overpowering just a subtle flavor of, of the cheesecake. US dollars to spend in a convenience store in Japan, or not in Japan, in South Korea. You can get a lot of stuff and fill your belly. We did it. We experienced a challenge here at a 7-Eleven in Seoul, South Korea. 10 US dollars got me all this. So it's overload of food. Easily two people can eat this. So you can eat for five bucks, you know? It really depends what you want. I personally recommend all the like fishy, seaweed ricey stuff that's just my jam you know i'm not a sweet person for the morning i want some savory stuff i wish i could eat seafood in miami for breakfast this doesn't exist over there well guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel seven right here. thanks guys and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in seoul south korea peace Good morning from beautiful, sunny Seoul, South Korea. Today I'm gonna to be doing two things with you guys. I'm gonna be taking you to the Saranche Museum. This museum basically shows you what Korea is about today, modern era. And then after this, we're going to the Tongan Market. The Tongan Market's a traditional market. They sell souvenirs, uh, local ingredients for food. They also have street food and there's restaurants. I'm very excited. I love Korean food and I love how much history I've been learning while being here. So I can't wait to get into this museum. Let's go inside. Sam, we're in the museum. Yeah, we are. And I love cats, so I want to tell you about the first cat. So this is from President Moon Jae <laughs> in 2007. Picked up the stray cat and they lived with the president. Okay, so right here we have the wall of the presidents from 1948 all the way until 2017. So the, the new president is not on this wall, right? And this one started in power right before the Korean War. So 1948, yeah. he got into power. Served and for 12 years. Served for 12 years, wow. Yeah. He served during the Korean War, which is 1950 to 53. And under it, it shows basically, uh, you know, their accomplishments, things that they achieved yeah. during their terms, right? But it basically it yeah. shows what they accomplished during their terms. It's basically like a summary of all their all the major events that happened during the presidency. And it's fascinating because some of them served for uh, as, as few as like this guy only served for just probably a year and a half. This guy over here served for eight years. So varying terms. So here in the next room, we have a lot of bright lights. Sam, what is this? This is an interactive map basically showing you the must visit tourist spots in Korea. It's like all these beautiful photos. They dim it. Then they light it back up and everything just comes to life. Like what fascinates me is there's just so many beautiful rural areas to visit in Korea. Like I've only scratched the surface. Yeah, I mean some of the stuff I didn't even know existed. I, I would have to unfortunately it doesn't tell you exactly where each thing is. Yes. But right across from us. There's an interactive map that does. Exactly. There's an interactive map that does and then it goes like this. So right over here, for example, I'm looking at Jeju Do. So I click on this, I got 
all kinds of information, pictures, introductions. I can change the language from Korean to English to Chinese to Japanese. And look at all the different attractions here. So for example, I click on here, I can scroll through the images. Just very impressive in terms of the information. Wow, so so much Falcon City, let's see. <laughs> Whoa, what market is this? Wow, that looks amazing. English? Oh, Guangzhou Market, that's Guangzhou. a famous one. Oh yeah? Yeah, that's actually a covered market. You can go in and get like tons of street food. One of the best places for street food in Seoul, to be honest. Three, two, one. So this display is basically all about Korean street food. It shows you all these different dishes. Right now it's not showing it, but before it was. So now we're going to the second floor of the museum. It's called Dear Korea Special Exhibit. Let's see what's up there. Okay, special exhibit of Summit Diplomacy Gifts. Okay, so here on the second level, we have basically a little history lesson about the democratic movement, right? Right, in Korea. All of the different protests, all of the stages that got to where Korea is today. Exactly, and right here we have the Blue House, which is called Chongwa Day. Chongwa Day. And that's the presidential house. Yeah. And it was built in 1991, covered by 150 Korean style blue tiles crafted to last for centuries or more. Yeah, basically incredible architecture with a mountain backdrop. Yeah, and it, the cool thing is that because of the mountain backdrop, it doesn't look like it's in Seoul. Like it looks like it's completely outside. I'm sure it's not in the center of the city, it's no. by this mountain. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just stunning. Stunning. And guys, I think it's time. Street food? Street food. Let's go. So we're outside now. It's nice, Beautiful man. day here in Seoul. Yep. Hey girls, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're walking to the Tongan Market. Yeah. This market dates back to the year 1941. Right, 75 stalls. 75 shops. stalls and shops. So, I don't know, we, it's, we have exactly like 80 minutes. No, no, a little more than that. Yeah. So we can't do every single one, but we're gonna see what, what there is. Yeah. We're gonna try some food. About one minute per stall. And this is it, Tongi Market. It actually reminds me of the market I went to in Kyoto, Nishida Market. And yeah, I mean, basically, as you can see, lots of vendors here. We got fruits, we got vegetables, we have snacks. There's also a butcher right here. Sam, you loving it or what? Loving it, man. Colorful fruit displays, vegetables so far. And I notice up ahead there is some street food, so oh, we're yeah, right going there? in the right direction. Perfect. I mean, it doesn't doesn't stop. I mean, it's no. like you got bakeries, yeah. you have veggie places like this. Wow, yeah. lots of seaweed there. Yeah, you can buy the banchan, the Korean side dishes that you eat at the restaurants. Take it home, put it in the fridge, and have it whenever you want. And then here we yeah, got some street it. food. Yeah, some pancakes. Yeah, those Korean are pancakes. Those are Korean pancakes. There's pajeon and there's kimchi jeon. We haven't tried the kimchi jeon yet. We'll definitely have to get that. Let's do it. And our first item today is kimchi jeon. Kimchi pancake. It only costs one dollar. Yeah. This is freaking amazing. One dollar for this. <laughs> I know. And we basically saw the process. This lady, what she does is she has the batter right. She puts it on the, you know, the skillet or the sizzle right there. Yep. She cooks it, she flips it, and done. She also has other things here like this one has like, I don't know, some green beans. It's other yeah. like eggs over there. But this is what I want to try because I love kimchi. I love pancakes, and this is spicy. You're gonna love this, dude. The first time trying it. Whoa! Mmm! <laughs> what do you think? Dude, it's like the most delicious pancake of all time. Spicy oh, no. pancake, I've never had it before. So yeah. kimchi, right? So fermented cabbage. Yep. With batter. Yep. And spicy. Oh, oh man. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> man, it's so good, and I'm starting to feel a tingle right now. Yeah, yeah. Going for number two. Oh, yeah. I know we're sharing that. That's the hardest thing, dude. This is so good. It's so good. So good. Mmm. I love the crunch inside. How it just burst. Yeah. Super moist. But the spice, the spice is what it's all about. If you come here, yeah, subscribe, dude. Subscribe, subscribe. Oh, yeah, yeah, subscribe. <laughs> David's been here. David's been here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I've been you. So, 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 so. All right, guys, that was freaking amazing. Yeah. Got some more fans. Got some more fans. What yeah, else are you gonna need a subscriber on the spot? <laughs> you actually watch them subscribe on the phone. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, what up, what up, yeah. yeah. Open oh, Gangnam Style. Oh. <laughs> All right, so where to next? Where to next? More so food. We're, we're more food, dude. More food. This is so funny. <laughs> and right here we have like 20 different types of kimchi. Super spicy. Everything looks really, really hot. As you can see, like lots of red. And right across, we're gonna try this like hand roll. Is that a hand roll or what is that? It's called uh, chakan gimbap. And they're long gimbaps. So we're gonna get them right now. It's 1,000, so like one buck for two. This is so affordable. 
quick correction, it's a thousand for one. So it's fine though because we're each eating one and it comes with sticks. Perfect. She rolled it up in like aluminum foil to go. And Good I think to we're, go, just, man. we're gonna post up like right here. And we got two picks to stab them. <laughs> okay, so the moment of truth, shakang gimbap, which is also good gimbap, that's what it says right there. Basically seaweed, got rice, and you have a lot of delicious veggies. You guys gotta go like that, right? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, Oh yeah. Mmm. Very little rice. Lots of veggies. Yeah. Very crunchy. Mmm. You got onion, you got carrot. Mmm, this is so delicious. I think there's also like a little bit of pork in there, right? It could uh, be. Pork or beef? Yeah. Man, it is fantastic. This is probably one of the best hand rolls I've had in Korea so far. I've had like four. Yeah. And this one's so good because this is so fresh. They probably just did it today. Wow. Oh, I love how, I love how healthy it is. Yeah. Mmm, super crunchy. And the price is great too. A dollar. Well, a dollar for one roll. Yeah. But if you eat two, you'll be fine. Yeah. I probably need five. Chung mao masu soyo. Perfect. Masu soyo. You can even just go. Uh, a shorter one is mashiketta. Chung mao masu soyo. Next up, we have doboki. Spicy stir fried rice cakes. I love this. I've already had it twice, but this one, Sam was saying, is a little different. It looks really spicy because it's really, really greasy and rich and red. Yeah. Sauce. Wow. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Nice and chewy. Almost has a consistency of mochi, yeah. but not sweet at all. Very greasy, very spicy. Here in Korea, they love their spice. Mmm. And I'm a spicy addict. I can live in Korea. My God. I know it. It, it keeps. It burns the more you have it. All right, give me more. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh man, guys, this is like this is the thing you have to try when you come to Korea. This and barbecue for sure. Oh. Mm. You just pop those all day long, huh? Bro, it's like I'm eating spicy worms. <laughs> <laughs> A double bite. <laughs> Non-stop. Oh, so the price for this one is 3,000. So 3,001 is like, like three US dollars, basically. A yeah. little under, right? A little under. Oh my gosh. This is so good, man. And there's so many kids here right now. It's 12.30. They've all come here for lunch. And they're really curious about what we're doing, too. Yeah. The way this place works is basically people get tickets and they get trays, right? So they pay, you know, I guess for a pound or something. You get a ticket. They get their tray and they go up to different vendors and they get their food. And this one says Seoul Future Heritage. So I don't know what that means, but everybody's coming here. So this food has to be some of the bombest food in the market. You gotta stop at this spot and have this. Man, this doesn't. Oh. Alright, so the feast does not stop. Look at this, we got Dokkong Yo, which is basically fried chicken with sweet and sour sauce. This one's not spicy at all. It looks spicy because it's red, but it's not. She's saying it's a little sweet. Oh my god. It's like sweet and sour chicken in a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. More like popcorn chicken. Mmm. What I love the most is that it's so organic. This chicken's like the freshest chicken you could have on the planet, for real. I have had Korean fried chicken for a few days in a row. Yeah. I'm in love with it. So good, man. Wow, wow. This country does the best fried chicken. Dude, it's super sweet. Yeah. I wish there was some spice, but I'm good. I've been having yeah. a lot of spicy things today. <laughs> we can get another dog bogey on the way out. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Next up, we have something that I love eating in China and in Japan. It's called oden, which is hot pot. And this one is like a fish. Look at this. Look at that, a spongy fish cake. Spongy, it's super hot. Ooh, it's really <laughs> hot. Oh my God, because it still has the soup in the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I love this. This is perfect for a winter day. When yeah. I was in Japan, I was eating oden like, I don't know, at least like every other day, you know? Yeah. That's right, you visited Japan in the winter. Look at that. <laughs> Moment of truth. Mm. Mm. It's basically like fish balls, right? But in a long format, right? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Texture, super soft, no spongy. Oh man, this is so good and so cheap. So it was only 500 won yeah. for one. Right? 50 cents, so 50 cents. Man. Crazy. 50 cents. And what am I going to do? I'm going to drink some of it. <laughs> oh my god. Non-stop food here. I don't know about you, man, but I'm sweating so much after having that with the soup. <laughs> so good. So good. 
Next. Is this, what is it? Shike. Yeah. Shike. Yeah. yeah. You think we should try it? Sure, you have to try. So I think we're gonna try the shike, which is like a rice juice. Looks really good. Oh, nice to meet you. We have to find it somewhere have a nice though. Day. <laughs> yeah, the problem here is there's so many street food vendors that it really doesn't end. I, know. I mean, there's some things that are really repetitive, obviously. Yeah, like the dog bookie, we've seen a few shops. But then there's other things like these dumplings that are like amazing. Yeah. But I don't want dumplings because that's more Chinese, right? That's, that's... Uh, yeah, but they're quite common in Korean. They're, they, they call them mandu, and okay. you can get ones with kimchi. So you can get some very traditional Korean ones. But yeah, okay. I think they originated from China. Originally. Wow. Yeah, maybe every day. In the summer. So we're now at Shike, the rice juice. Oh, yeah. And this lady makes it at home every single day it looks phenomenal let's get two <laughs> and here we have the traditional rice drink it's called shike look at this you see the grains at the bottom wow really nice right here oh man you see them so well it looks really nice what uh, Sam was telling me is that it's similar to like sugarcane juice that you get in India right Really refreshing. It costs 1,000 won, so one US dollar for this drink. Oh my God. You're right, dude. It does have that taste to it. Yeah. Really refreshing. It's like, I'm so hot, and you just hit me with this burst of like cold energy, right? Yeah. Oh my God, it's so good. And the grains just go down the, just go down the hatchet, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. straight down, you don't even feel them. You don't, you don't feel them or anything. All. This is really, really nice, man. I think this is the best thing to have, especially on a hot day like today. Yeah. And when everybody came into this market, it just got really, really hot. Yeah. On top of the spice, it just cools you down. Oh, wow. I'm ready for more. How many more? <laughs> Maybe one more. Maybe one more. I think we're going to get some rice cakes to finish off. Dessert. Let's go. Do it. Next up is dessert. Hot talk. Hot talk. Hot talk. Hot talk which is basically a Korean pancake with honey and pine nuts. It's really hot. He just made it in front of us. I mean, he put the batter, he pressed it down, put lots of oil all over it. Super <laughs> greasy, as you can see. Oh, it's extremely freaking hot. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. Oh, mm. oh wow. Look, it's a honey donut. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a hot honey donut. Oh. <laughs> Really hot. You get more of the honey in the middle. Like, wait till you take your third or fourth bite. Mm -hmm. You can see, look at that. Look at the pine nuts, the honey. That just like, oh, it's oh. oozing out. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> be careful, man. This in winter would be amazing, but I'm in love with it. I'm a big honey guy. Yeah. I love how sweet it is. The dough is just very, very soft, and the outside is a little crispy. Yeah. It's perfect, dude. The only thing is, I would let it like sit for a bit. Yeah. A little too hot for me. Oh, but I'm in love with it, man. Like, I really freaking A. It's too hot. It's too hot. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Too, too hot to too, handle. Too. too hot to handle. Oh. You done? Let me take a break. Wow, wow. What an amazing <laughs> market. This market was unreal. Insane. Local. Local, traditional, word, local. local. I mean, I didn't see one foreigner except this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was the palest person in, yeah. in, the, in the room. <laughs> I gotta say, I mean, everything was delicious. We tried, I think, five or six different things. Yeah, yeah. My favorite thing was uh, dok, dok. The dokbuki, yeah. Dokbuki, which is the spicy rice cakes. I mean, it's super authentic, traditional Korean. That You won't find that anywhere else in the world. I know, it's, it's the most Korean thing ever. Yeah. Seriously. So guys, I mean, next time you come to Seoul, I highly recommend coming to this market. It's the most authentic place for street food yeah. here in Seoul. I mean, I'm sure there's other places. Skip the tourists, come here. Yeah, skip the tourist traps, come here. Well guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea. Peace. Peace. What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from beautiful Seoul, South Korea. Today I'm super excited because I'm taking the KTX, the Korean Express train or the bullet train, all the way down to Busan, the second largest city. The bullet train started service in the year 2004 and it travels 190 miles per hour. We're gonna be going economy class today, so we're gonna give you an economy class review. And yeah, we're starting it right here in Seoul Station, obviously. This is the number one station in the country. We're gonna go look for some food and get on the train. Are you guys ready? I'm excited, let's do this. It's so early, I thought we weren't gonna be able to get any food. There's actually a lady right here and she's selling hand rolls, hand rolls, look at this, wow. And she also has some, like some mochis, 
I mean, there's a lot of different things here. Let's get a few of these and go in inside. So this is the gimbap hand roll. Oh my God, guys, I love hand rolls. It looks like it's coated in sesame seeds too, dude. Oh man. Oh, look at that, it's got an egg. I'm just gonna pull a piece off. Crazy. Look at that. Oh, dude, it's Jack. This is the best breakfast ever. I know, and for 2001, it's like less than two bucks, dude. Mmm. Couldn't have asked for a better breakfast at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> I know. It actually has a good amount of rice, and it's just like vegetables. I think there's egg, it's, there's some pork. Oh, it's too good. It's too good. Mm. It's too good. This is the perfect way to start the day. Nice snack. I think inside I'm gonna have to get a coffee though, because if not, I'm not gonna be able to survive the two mm. hours on the train. The day doesn't start until you have had a cup of coffee. Yeah, I, I might <laughs> sleep on the train, maybe not. Yeah, we'll I see. I don't know, once I get on there, let's see how animal class is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once you walk into Seoul Station, the first level is more grab-and-go kind of shops. You've got like Dunkin' Donuts, convenience stores and whatnot. But if you head up to the other level, the second level, that's where you have more restaurants and other things that where you can relax, grab a bite to eat. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna do that. We don't have time, but uh, we'll probably get something on the ground level. Especially if you're gonna travel on the bullet train on the weekends, is booking your ticket at least like four or five days in advance. Dude, we grabbed like the last ones. Yeah, so we, we booked our train ticket two days ago when we checked, there was, you know, we're going at six in the morning. The yeah. only reason we're going at six in the morning is because there was nothing until like four in oh. the afternoon yeah. and we would have missed the entire day yeah, in Busan. Yeah. So no point in doing that. So definitely try to get your ticket early. Yeah. And this ticket is of the economy class. Let's see the price. Yeah, so 59,800, which is basically like 60 bucks. Yeah, and maybe a little bit cheaper, more like 55 bucks, so. So I'd say it's like price, half man. the price of the bullet train in uh, the Shinkansen in Japan. Yeah, Over there, it's, it's really expensive. This is half price, it's affordable. I mean, this is way cheaper than trying to book a plane ticket, right? Oh yeah, and it's just, it's more efficient too. Like you don't have to go through all the security and all that. You just get to the station, get on the train, you're good to go. Seoul Station is the largest station in all of South Korea. It's not a huge station like you get in Japan or China, you know, Tokyo, Kyoto, those are humongous stations with so many platforms. Here it's very easy. As you can see, this one huge hallway, right? A lot of space in between the tickets, resting area, and then all the retails on the left. Upstairs, obviously, you have the fast food, you know, restaurants. And then over here, you have convenience stores like Storyway. And then you have the tracks, and there's, I think there's like 15 tracks, yeah. and our track is track number four. We depart in like 15 minutes, so we still have some time. Let's go get something in the convenience store. Yeah, it's, it's basically grab and go options here, man. Yeah, that, grab that's the culture, grab and go. Grab and and go. I, I like this, I mean, it's not so many people. No. There's a lot of space, and yeah. get here early. 15, like 20 people in line, we just don't really have the time, man. You know what? We'll get on the train, get some sleep, and we'll grab something to eat in Busan. So it's pretty amazing. The trains are delayed by zero seconds, like yeah. zero minutes, zero, minutes zero seconds. Across the board, man. At 6.05 on the dot, the train leaves. Crazy. So don't be late for your train. Don't they will late, not wait man. for you. Once you exit the main hall, you get to the tracks, okay? There's lots of different tracks. There's, I think, 14 or 15 different tracks. We're on track number four, and I was seeing the, the sign, and it said, Zero delay on every single train. These trains do not get delayed, so don't expect them to wait for you. You have to be here on time. I'd say be in your seat five minutes before departure. It's the best way to guarantee you don't miss the train. And yeah, look at this train right here. And here we are, cart number 18. And the best way to know where the cart is is to look to the floor. As you can see, 18? Right there. Right? We have like no time. The train leaves in six minutes. Let me jump on this. Try to travel light. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right there. Yes. And this is economy class on the KTX. Very nice, very uh, cozy, as you can see. The, it's not leather, but it's really nice, reclinable, right? Yeah. There's also free Wi Fi on board. And look at this recline. You also can put your thing. Boom, right there. Not Relax. bad for the animal class, huh? Dude, and lots of space, like lots of <laughs> leg room. If you're like a six foot tall person, you're good. You're good. I'm six foot feet, so. I'm <laughs> six feet tall, so. <laughs> it's too early, guys. Too early, it's not man. even six yet. We can't formulate our thoughts this time uh, of day. I can't wait to start riding. As soon as you get on the train, you'll see a section here for big luggage. So you don't bring your luggage all the way into the cart, just put it here. Unfortunately, I'm one of those guys that travels with huge luggage, <laughs> so I have to start right here. You and, get up half of it. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's super safe here in Korea, so don't worry. You don't have to lock it up. Just 
put it there, and you're good. Dude, it was like 6.05 on the dot, the thing just took off. And you know what's crazy? Is we thought like this train was gonna be packed. No, hardly anyone here in our section. It's like we've got like, this is almost better than first class. We've got all this room, check it out. Oh, good morning. Slept like an hour and a half right now. Wow. Getting up this early is really, really intense. But the good thing is when you catch a train, it's early. Everybody sleeps. And uh, you know the rule here in Korea is when you get on a train in the morning, even if it's like 9 a.m., you gotta be really, really quiet because everybody sleeps. And we are about to get to Busan. Uh, we have like 10 minutes to go. As you can see, the landscape here is like mountains, but not really like mountains. It's more like like big hills, right? very green, lots of farming communities, lots of rice fields. And we've been through like so many tunnels, just tunnel after tunnel after tunnel. And Sam slept a lot too. Sam? I think I slept even more than you. I was out, like man, like out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really beat. I mean, I'm still really, really tired, but I can't wait to get to Busan, have a real huge breakfast and start our day. I can't wait, it's gonna be such a great four days in Busan. We're not gonna go to Busan, we're gonna go do a few other things you guys will see in the next videos. But yeah, going, going 190 miles an hour is amazing. It's like, you don't even feel the train. I mean, it's like shh. You know, the train does stop a few times. That's why it takes two hours and 15 minutes. If it didn't stop at all, I would just like, you know, just from Seoul to Busan, it would probably take like an hour and a half. But yeah, we do stop at a few other spots. And you know, we thought this train was gonna be empty. It was empty in Seoul, this car, but slowly, people started getting on the train. As you can see, there's a lot of people on the train right now. And yeah, people are starting to wake up. Okay, let's go to Busan. We're here. I'm hungry, dude. Yeah, I am starving. Starving, starving. <laughs> oh my God, it's crazy. Charlie with this much luggage is uh, a little nutty. This guy's like with one bag and I'm with like, <laughs> the bags of bags. Humongous. <laughs> the behemoth. As you can see, there's so many people getting off this train. I mean, it was packed 100% to capacity. I can't even believe that because I've never seen that. Even in Japan, I didn't see 100% of capacity. But they they love riding the train here. We made a lot of money today. <laughs> I mean, it cost them a few billion dollars to, to start each one of these, so. <laughs> so we made it here to Busan and as soon as we exited the train, we went up the escalators and came to the main terminal and we're like really, really, really hungry. And we don't wanna eat like donuts or some like cafe, just some regular bakery. We want some real Korean food. So we found a place that has bibimbap upstairs. We're gonna take the escalators up and we're gonna have like a traditional Korean breakfast. Oh. When, you know, when you travel, you should really dive into the food, like really try your best to eat what the locals eat every day, all day long. I mean, that's what I do. Because you know what, when I get home, I'm not gonna be eating like this, right? So, bibimbap. Chamchi uh, kimchi bibimbap. Oh, if you make a stone pot, it's only 1,000. A dolsa. Dolsa chamchi kimchi bibimbap. You get in a stone pot, burns the rice, it's like way more delicious. <laughs> Dude, it's our lucky day. I found us a really cool cafe on the second floor of the Busan train station. It is called Bon Duke and Bibimbap Cafe. And Duke is the porridge, Bon is like good Duke, like tasty Duke. And bibimbap, man, you're gonna love this bibimbap that we ordered. We got the dulce bibimbap and the stone pot, dude. That is the boss of all bibimbaps. And what I decided to go with was a tuna and kimchi. Two of my favorite things ever. Yeah, and I'm getting a pumpkin, pumpkin porridge basically, sweet pumpkin porridge. It's uh, called bupakjuk. David, I'm loving breakfast, man. I got a traditional Korean porridge. It's called hopak juk. It's basically like smashed glutinous rice with pumpkin. You can see how orange it is from the pumpkin. It also comes with like um, rice balls and some red beans. It's really, really tasty, really healthy, a little bit sweet. I'm gonna try some of it here. Mm, dude, you don't even have to chew it. It's so smooth, you just put it in your mouth and overwhelms your taste buds and swallow it down. Such a delicious food, man. Oh my God, thank God this is here. <laughs> <laughs> so this, is, 
the tuna and kimchi bibimbap, which is basically like a rice bowl with vegetables. Yeah. So we have uh, kimchi, tuna, seaweed, uh, I think it's cucumber, some radish, mushrooms. On the side we have some more kimchi, there's a root vegetable and a soup. And the way it works is basically it comes in a stone pot. I actually paid an extra thousand for this, right? Yeah. So oh, Sam was telling me like the best thing to do is when it's sizzling, just let it sizzle, sizzle until it stops sizzling because you're burning the bottom of the rice. Okay. Tastes so delicious that way, man. Oh, I can't wait. This is the first time trying bibimbap. Got the sauce, open the sauce, right? Okay, so the red sauce, oh my God. First things first, put the, oh, the oh, delicious red sauce. Oh, it looks so good, dude, it looks so rich. Oh, wow, this oh, looks man. almost like a, like a Chinese sauce, you know? Yeah. Oh, like lick it. Mmm, <laughs> oh, it's, so oh, it's spicy. Spicy and sweet. Okay, so next up, what we do is supposed to flip the rice over everything, right? Oh yeah, you can see how it's burnt. crispy. See how it's crispy like that? Oh, that's the best. And then you're saying to mix it all together, right? Yeah, you just stir it like crazy until it's basically been... Uh, like you a bit. Stir it for like a minute or two until it's all mixed together. This is how I love eating. I love mixing things. Yeah. So, this is like super up my alley. Wow, it's gonna be like a really hot, ricey bowl. Whoa. Love the veggies in there, man. So colorful, man. And if you really don't have enough kimchi, you could just throw all the rest of the kimchi on top. <laughs> so here we go. Can I get a big spoon? Wow. Wow. Mmm. Oh yeah. I love the burnt rice, man. That's perfect. Great. That's the best, isn't Thank it? you. <laughs> mm. Wow, it's, it's really well blended too. Now you have all these different explosions and flavors, you know, you got the the veggie, the crunchiness, the kimchi, the spice, the seafood, the seaweed. Oh man, dude, this is amazing. I know, this is, when someone asked me, like, what's your favorite Korean food? I said, probably this. Dude, I'm blown away, like, I'm really blown away. It's so tasty, and so filling. But for breakfast, <laughs> it's like. It's a king's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's 10 a.m. now, we've been moving for like four hours. The train ride was really, really awesome. I mean, Seriously. it's a great experience. Plus we caught up on some sleep. Yeah, we slept, <laughs> we slept a lot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, hit too, too, many, too many things here. Too many things going on. But yeah, I mean, it, it, the best way to get to Busan is by taking the KTX. Yeah. You know, if you're going to go in economy, it's like 50 US dollars, 55 US dollars. You want to go in first class, it's around 80. Yeah. Um, it's just, this is like the only way. I mean, you can also take a slower train. It'll take like yeah. triple the time. A bus. A bus. Probably four times the time. That's like five. You're still looking at five plus hours, man. Yeah, no, that's so, too much. You can also much. fly here if you want, but yeah. there's no point. Security on Yeah, what would be the point? Like doing going through all the security? Like this is the best way to get here by far, hands down. Yeah. And you arrive in a good good location in the city too. Yeah, and then we had delicious breakfast. I had the beef and bob. We had the, I had the, the rice porridge, the ri pumpkin rice porridge. <laughs> it it looked good. really good. I didn't try it, it but good. next time I'll try it. Yeah. Well guys, I hope you love this video. We are about to start our adventures here in Busan. Get ready, it's gonna be incredible. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next childhood adventure in Busan, South Korea. Peace.